All right. Hey guys, it's Neon and I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're back on Clownfish TV. Going to do a little live drawing, a little chatting uh, tonight. Again, it's kind of impromptu. We don't really have a set schedule yet. We just sort of uh, do it. So we do it. We want to do it. We just do it, man. So what are we going to talk about? Do you want to, uh, what do you want to talk about? Well, I was going to talk about um, some different things with doing comics, web comics, graphic novels, writing, characters, world building, that kind of stuff. Because people are asking questions about how we do these things. Right. How we do these things. We, we are not. It. We are not the uh, the definitive answer on everything. Even though I, I would say I am, but you know. Yeah. I think you are. I think you have a pretty good uh, idea of how to um, do things. Um, Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Let's talk about Batman. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Uh, he's rich. I'm not him. Yeah, he's manly. Yeah. I hear so. that if you can choose to be anything, you should choose to be Batman, though. So. Yeah, I would choose to be Batman. I always want you know who's better, Batman or Tony Stark? I think Tony Stark's smarter than Batman. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Okay. All right. I don't know. I'm, I'm don't just know. waiting for you to finish. So I'm. Just... Oh no, I'm just I'm just kind of getting stuff ready here. To, uh, somebody was was. Um, uh, messing with my iPad because my stuff's not where it was. Oh, I have one guess um, who before. that was. But yeah. anyway, uh, it wasn't me. So, uh, yeah, so we were going to talk about different things with, like, comics and web comics and, and all of that. And, well, first of all, we'll start with the Webtoons thing that you said there was some uh, stuff going on with that. Yeah, with Webtoons. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Uh, webtoons we talked about webtoons before and uh, you know i don't know exactly what's going on with them i think their their business model is um whatever is going to make the most money that week uh, i don't know i think they're making it up as they go along yeah well, yeah that's what we kind of we do yeah <laughs> to um, some level. so there there's been some chatter since they they pulled the plug on the discovery program back in january in favor of another contest but uh i just want to yeah, well, know about that though i mean uh, you know a lot of people are entering the contest and things so, but the problem is, the question is, is there's been some weird stuff with numbers, you said? Yeah, apparently. Now, I went out to, now, Topastic is technically their competition. Right. But there are a lot of uh, uh, webcomic careers who actually post on both. Uh, right, we, we and, did. We always yeah. posted on both. Yeah, so um, some people are accusing, now this is going back to January, and it's still, uh, the thread's still going on on the forums about, uh, they think the numbers are kind of shady on Webtoons. So, well, I, I know, I know we've know. been part of networks before that I say I think the numbers were shady on. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me because if you're trying to build it up to sell it or to attract people who want to do IP acquisitions and things like that, yeah. it makes sense that you would do that even though you're not supposed to do that. But everybody does it anyway. Yeah. So they they uh they've actually you know with their new ad program which is taking the place of. The uh, Discover program, basically, you or no, it's not taking the place of Discover, but they're they're doing that. That's how they're going to monetize Discover. It's taking place of the Patreon thing, right? It's taking place of Patreon. Okay. Um, but we're talking like the minimum page views per month, or like forty thousand page views, which it's not really a lot, but it's if if you're used to working uh, vertically, which is what they encouraged, you're not going to get a lot of page views. Mm -hmm. You've got this really like deep scrolling uh, uh, right. comic that you're not going to get a lot of page views. People are uploading entire chapters of a comic, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so that's kind of an odd, you know, uh, thing to switch gears now because now they have to go for the CPM for the... Uh, but I thought before, if you did not have the infinite scroll, it kind of worked against you because it would yes. you'd actually get the page views. Yes. But now if you went to the infinite scroll that they wanted, it's well, actually biting you in the it's butt. It's actually going to hurt you. Yeah, because you're not going to get okay. as many views. You're not going to get as much ad revenue. Yeah, and um, so, you know, they seem to be kind of be backpedaling. I think they figured out that, like, you know, the advertising is based on per view. Yeah, and it's infinite a, scroll doesn't really work no, for that. No, because, I mean, you could have, you could actually have a comic that, you know, scrolls and scrolls and scrolls, and is actually, like, 25 pages of comics uh, versus those 25 pages. And page that counts as views. one as right, opposed to right. 25 pages. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So it's not really, I don't think it works like YouTube yet, where YouTube... Uh, kind of does uh, you know watch time they kind mm -hmm. of look at watch time as a factor I don't know if webtoons does that but uh, people are complaining about it they're they're saying that um, you know there's really no point in in doing it anymore because you know they keep uh, up in the the minimum requirements to get paid and there are people that are like you know they're making four or five hundred dollars a month or whatever and now there's like no money at all but then other people are like well my subscribers were going up like crazy but I wasn't actually getting any views. That's weird. Yeah, so people were kind of wondering if, you know, again, I don't 
I don't know. This is all this hearsay. Is I have say. no idea what's it's actually a going on. Scuttlebutt. Um, I just like saying the, the word scuttlebutt. It's fun. This is a scuttlebutt. This is what other other uh, comics creators are saying, but they think that maybe uh, Webtoons was uh, feeding traffic to try to get the IP the person site. to come to get so they can give it to all the the, the yeah. print people so they can have IP deals and everybody else who build it up can go suck right, it. Right, right. So they could brag. They could basically brag. Uh, about how many page views they have and in, in monthly users, and then yeah, you know, get well, those. Well, forty thousand is really not that a whole lot. It's not, but if you're if let's just say that you you upload your your comic and it's like you know a twenty five page comic that you dump the whole thing in one chapter, that only counts as one page view. It doesn't matter how long the scroll is. See, that drove me nuts. Is like you do a comic and you know it might take you sixteen hours to do a page, which sometimes it takes us sixteen hours to do a page. And um, people would be like, well, we, where's the rest? I want I want one every day. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it doesn't really work that way. So I don't know what's going on, but people are really kind of Yeah, we're out. just getting started on the stream. Yeah, we're just kind of getting started. So um, no, you're not late Smash for the stream. Trailer. We're just talking talking stuff. Uh, the new Smash Brothers trailer. They're going to oh, have oh, Simon oh, Belmont. Yeah, yeah. Simon Belmont's going to be in it. Thankfully, it's not the Captain N version of Simon Belmont. Although I understand from previous streams that we have fans of Captain N. Uh, which is cool. I mean, it was yeah, it was a cheesy show, but it was it was all right. Everybody's here to see if we mention Christian porn again. <laughs> they're going to tie that. They're going to tie that into uh, into web comics today. Yeah. So there we're, you go. We're you just can always like, start your own. You are kind of looking at at uh, you know, some of the options here because it seems like anymore with uh, digital comics, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to host the comic on your own site now because the advertising options <laughs> are limited. Uh, webtoons seems to just be for the people who are paid to be on webtoons. Um, if people, you're a discoverer, you're kind of lost in the, um, and a lot of people probably want to get off of Tumblr. So I'm just saying, oh my, don't forget the novels. Wink. Oh God. Yes. Uh, oh yeah. Travis yeah. Has all kinds that was of, a huge thing when they switched to, so we're doing print novels and all that. I yeah. I don't understand what they, well, I, I, I understand. We gotta find something. We gotta throw spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, yeah, I call him Kevin Bam, so that's good. Um, Captain N, yeah, I'd like to see a reboot of Captain N. That'd be pretty cool. So, uh, Geeky wanted to talk a little bit about... Uh, well, people were asking questions last time, so I was yeah. like, oh, I promise I mean, we'll, we'll come back and talk yeah, about we'll that. Yeah, we'll talk about t just kind of webcomics But I'm sure I'll get set off on something before it's all said and done. We'll talk about whatever. I mean, if you guys want to throw some topics out there, if we're familiar with it, we can... Well, um, people were asking, like, uh, about uh, writing for comics and things i think depending on what you're doing it it it's different like if you're writing a self-contained graphic novel it's going to be completely different than writing a webcomic yeah don't you think yeah i think so um because with webcomic the problem with webcomics is that they trickle them out over the course of you know weeks months years and you have to maintain interest right you always have to have a cliffhanger type thing sorry i'm sorry about the 80s are coming back yeah the 80s are coming back but everybody's trying to ruin it but that's another story entirely so am I drawing? What, what am I drawing? Am I, I don't draw, know. Like, what are you drawing? We were talking before about doing uh, Steven Universe characters uh, uh, in like '80s style Funimation, F Funimation style, or like I just want to. You know about world building. Okay, that depends. That depends on you. Like I, we actually how we work is is different. Um, basically, you Neon tells you what he wants to draw. He's like, hey, you know, I'd like to draw a, a city made out of cliffs. And then we're like, okay, we'll make a story about that. So if depending on geography, it depends if you're doing it in the real world. Of course, you're going to have to have some geography and idea of where you're talking about it. In ours, we do it in a fantasy world. So we can make it up how we want to. And, you know, we do that. Now, some people start out, they don't even draw anything, write anything until they have a no. big Bible binder full of, you know, languages and, and um you know, different places in the world and all that, and, you know, and they have it all figured out, which, which is, is probably way more work than way I'm more than we to. do. But I, I think that's a good idea because then they know what they're talking about because we're all often like, wait, what did we say again? Yeah. But um, some people do like we do. Where we just kind of like, hey, mostly it's just you saying I want to draw this because it'd be cool. And yeah, make it much. up. And then other people I know, they've gotten their whole story from like playing Dungeons and Dragons and they had like these cool characters and it worked out really fun. So they turned it into a book. That is actually how uh, Dragonlance, this is like dork knowledge, I guess, but Dragonlance, uh, the world of Kryn got started was it was actually like uh, the authors uh, was Tracy Hickman and somebody's going to 
catch me on this one because I forget the other one. Margaret Wise? Margaret Wise? And I have no idea. It was their world, and then they, they created the Dragonlance novels out of it, and mm-hmm. they did the campaign. So. Yeah, so I'll, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. So it's up to you how much geography you want to study before doing it. If you're doing it in the real world and you want to put it someplace else, I'd make sure I study that really well. But if it's your own fantasy world, it's up to you if you want to do all, you know, have all that stuff ready before you start, or if you want to just make it up as you go. I mean, you can get yourself stuck in a corner if you make it up as you go. Yeah. We're more fly by the senior pants type people. <laughs> so. I, was always liked, I always liked Axe Cop, the webcomic, because they were like totally making it up and it was written by his, his uh, brother, um, who was like five, I think, when they started the comic. So it was written by a kid and it was just like so say you should draw ridiculous. You should draw Simon Belmont. Yeah, maybe. Well, we'll see what kind of time I have. I mean, we're just gonna, so we're do just... fantasy worlds have a space and is it on a planet? I think it depends on what you want. Like, what you're going for, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, it could be an alternate world, or they could, like, not really explain it very well. Like, I'm, I'm still kind of, like, you know, we were talking about He-Man and She-Ra, like, a theory is kind of, like, I don't know if it's another planet or another dimension. It's kind of, somebody will probably catch me on that one, but it's because I used to use a portal to go back and forth. Well, we kind of, which is, which we weren't even thinking about that when we did ours, and ours is as interdimensional type thing, and it's yeah. going to be more so as the story goes on. So, basically, you know, there's no way, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, I know people do it all different ways. I know people have binders. I know people who play campaigns and they make their story up as they're playing the campaign and every week they get together with their friends and they continue the story. Um, we do it like basically how we, we actually did ours. It was really funny. Way, way back, way, way back. I'm not going to say how far back, but way, way back because it was before you met me even. Um, Neon had a comic that he was working on called Shadowbinders. And it was nothing like our shadow binders. It was oh. like, um, do you actually have some of that on your your? I, um, might, I, might, I, I might. think he has on his DeviantArt on art page. Stuff. So it was nothing like ours. Um, and actually, I'm into like anime and I'm into books and I'm into like House Moon Castle is my favorite book and I oh, love yeah, Stardust so and I love stuff like that. Yeah, that's like the old shadow binders, which that may may or not appear in the new one. Um, and he had a ship called the True North and everything else. So I kind of had a, a story idea I was working with. And he had his old story, and I thought, well, I like the name Shadowbinders, and I really like the True North. Um, so I kind of commandeered it. He was, and I found out later he was mad about it. He didn't tell me he was mad about it until years later. Yeah. But, like, here's... No, I here, can really I use ma- this while you do that? Yeah. So here's some of the really, old... I wasn't really mad about it. I Wait, where just, do you have... Do you have the, uh, do you have the I don't know pages? if I have any old stuff in here. There's, I know you have Ravager. What else do you have in there? You have the, the, the space stuff. base. There's some Transformers stuff. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I know, but I don't have that much in here, I don't think. Um, you had the space base. I don't know. Yeah, I remember when you submitted those Transformers drawings. They were like, oh my god, that's going to kill a colorist. And then later you became a colorist. Yeah. Oh, there's the old North. Oh, here we go. There's like some airships and junk. So um, so that's kind of how we kind of got ours. We kinda, it was like, you got your peanut butter and my chocolate. You got your chocolate and my peanut butter. And that's kind of what we did. We made Reese cups. <laughs> there's a dirty, there's a dirty joke in here somewhere, but I'm not gonna. Oh, here's some like creepy stuff I did. Yeah, yeah so this is all from the original. It's very old. Yeah, I don't draw too much in that style anymore because I can't, I can't keep up the pace. <laughs> like some you of the drawings to are it. like all day. That's something else you have to one. think about too when you're doing a comic and you want to do a web comic and you're going to update it frequently. Um, you might have something that's amazing like that, or like the Ravager drawing, or something that took all is all this intricate line work but what it's just like um i think steven universe the original art was a lot more detailed but when you have to do it all the time and, and do it quickly yeah. you're gonna want to tone that down yeah, <laughs> you know i'm definitely. just saying well yeah because actually if you know speaking of steven universe if you saw the the pilot episode of uh steven universe it was it was very different from uh you know what what we finally got um and it what it looked very like almost like 90s like kind of like uh indie comic and it was actually kind of cool i like the i like the pilot artwork for for steven universe better than the final before artwork. it became the iconic artwork that we, everything <sighs> has to look like now the cow wars. yeah it was actually very it was more like anime style but they again it would have cost a lot more to produce that show and i think where where this whole bean mouth thing comes from is yeah, it's, yeah, you know it's speed it, speed and, and it's it's very efficient because they can you know especially with the software they're using now they can like map the mouth shapes out and sort of like paste them on right. the faces and... well they even have software now that we actually have we never use where they actually will map your face onto something and talk oh yeah yeah we yeah. actually have that we just never use we it do. it's 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 kind of hard to do it's actually a tracking software they have it's almost like uh almost like snapchat and it's something that a lot of the animation studios are starting to use now especially for like kids shows because it's right. sort of simplistic but they'll actually map your face to a model and then they sort of rig it to your face and i've played around with it it's kind of a pain but 
Yeah, I think that's why they're minimi- minimalizing a lot of the, the... They're doing the minimalist view of things on the new cartoons because it is very hard to keep up. And um, a, lot of they, a lot of them want to use, like, Flash or different things like that. And you cannot get too detailed in yeah. those to keep the cost down. Um, that's why Voltron was awesome because I'm sure it costs a lot more than, say... Uh, the Nishira. I'm just yeah, saying. <laughs> I, think, I, I really do think a lot of that... People, you know, bust on the Cal Art style, but I really do think a lot of that comes from... Uh, just keeping expenses down and, and it's not i mean i'm not excusing it but like those 80s shows in today's dollars like just a, just an episode of uh your basic like adventure time from what i understand it can run between a half million and a million dollars an episode i, I yeah. believe now anime actually costs less because they use sweatshops well someone was joking um, about that actually <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah what, yeah anime um yeah so anime definitely is i've heard you can do like anime episodes they cost like a hundred two hundred thousand an episode and that's only because they're not paying their people for all of which i can't afford so okay yeah. so if you want to write fantasy how much canonical fantasy should i read beforehand oh that's up to you i mean i mean it's up to you and depending on what style you want to do it in like if you're doing a high fantasy i'm taking it then you might want to read some things only because, um, of course, not copy, but to get inspiration, maybe to make some things that are similar. So you can say, OK, if you like Tolkien, you'll like this kind of thing. Um, I mean, I, I my what we do fantasy, but ours is more like a fantasy light kind of thing. Yeah, you call kind it? Of like, I mean, I kind of look at like the original Avatar series was kind of fantasy. Light That's because, ours is more like original Avatar. Yeah, they kind of just you could tell they kind of made things up as they went along. And they were like, let's just put two animals together. And it's a, an owl bear. It's a turtle rabbit it's a you know like just yeah. random like it's a turducken you know, it's a turducken <laughs> yeah but i'm just so yeah i mean it's up to you i mean again it's it's, it's all pretty much up to you if you want to read more so you have more inspiration do it like me i'm always uh I, t- I seem to take my inspiration from um favorite books or favorite anime or tv shows and when i actually do things and that's kind of where the difference in web comic and graphic novels come to play too is when i write them i i uh, neon knows leave me alone because I basically like zone out and I'm <laughs> yeah. like okay I just say give me what you want and then I'll make it work and you do you'll say I want this 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 yeah. and this and I'm like okay and then like leave me alone for you know and I'll play it in my head like a movie um I actually do things I kind of scripted like a movie it's more like but even when I write it out it's more like a movie script wouldn't you say yeah I think so. I think so I mean because we kind of since we work together it's easier to go back and forth sometimes and but they, even then like going back and forth a lot of times because we kept different hours, especially when we were doing the comics. Yeah. So a lot of times I would just kind of plow ahead on the art and not understand exactly what she was talking about. And, and then I get in trouble and then she's like, well, don't worry about it because <laughs> we got to get, that's the problem with web, web comics. It's like, well, screw it. We got to get an update up because people want free stuff. So you some merch that you make. Yeah. I probably can make a larger budget if you have merchandise. Uh, if I do a question with you, how many people will watch my channel? I have no idea. Uh, I, I was don't like, know. I'll ask the Magic Eight Ball because I really I don't have know. No idea. Our videos, like, I mean, they some got, of them like, do good, and some of them like, are like. Bleh. Some of them we have like, yeah. So it's so weird. Like, wah, 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 I, wah. I don't think I think it's because we don't have a ton of subscribers yet. So we we've got like most people come in when, to see me get mad. Yeah, pretty much. Like, but we can't just make it like you. you all my geeky. family tries to avoid me getting mad. Everybody's like, hey, it's like we need some views. Geeky. Again. <laughs> get pissed off. No, but like um pissed off powers go but what i'm i was saying it was different to write web comics than to write graphic novels and the reason i say this is because we've done both and web comics tend to be that you have to since you're doing only updating on certain days or you're doing a dump like once or twice a week <laughs> that sounds wrong but you know it's what like i mean a dump uh, some um, web comics are They're but uh fun. yeah it depends so you, you're gonna have to keep the ending of your of your like chunk you put up on a cliffhanger of some sort to keep people interested to come back now graphic novels is completely different because you're gonna do it as a self contained one book or two or three books or whatever you you get the deal for or however you decide to do it and you don't have to do that as much so you you can do long you know long thought out things that don't have to ha- ha- end some some beat on every page yeah you're the one that draws why aren't you saying anything um because i'm drawing and it's actually hard for me to have a whole conversation when i'm drawing <laughs> So, Kiki is oh, Ben Stiller you, from Mystery Man. Oh my god! Well, actually, it was funny because we used to watch Gumball. You ever see Gumball's mom? Yes, um, Nicole is my, real life. They would refer to me as, as Nicole. Like she would do something, and they'd all stop and look at me, and I'm like, "What?" Or like the oh part with the grocery store the grocery where she, store, she gets the fight with the, with the um the, the little old lady over the, yeah. the discounted oh, the meat. chicken, the discounted the, chicken. Yeah, yeah, they all stopped what they were doing and looked at me, and I was like, "What?" Because yeah. Anyway, um. But when I wrote the graph, we did a graphic novel. Um, we, we pitched a couple. We have a couple that we worked on. Um, 
unfortunately not out because one we're still working on but it was a self-contained prequel to our shadow butter story and i was proud of that one man i, I can't wait to get that one out because i'm so proud of it but um we i just sat down and kind of did it all one day and then we worked together and you yeah. edited it and made it better but it was all it was cool because you didn't have to end every page on how am i gonna end this on a cliffhanger yeah how am i gonna end this on a beat it was one book and and i didn't have to worry about that so you have to look at them differently when you write them depending on what you're doing yeah definitely i think i liked writing the graphic novel better personally but uh yeah because at least then you can yeah nicole's who my family compares me to (laughs) yeah wait disney if you're making a live action show for us to remember cat marvel for their oh probably wait what's going on here um disney abc making a live action show uh, I haven't heard are anything. They? I know they're they're doing the movie, but I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise. Well, me. they were talking; they might be some, doing some more Marvel shows, so yeah. that wouldn't surprise me. They're just doing stories on that today, actually. Now, yeah, now I don't know. I don't know where the MCU is going to go after Infinity War because I mean, they got the whole thing going on with Guardians now. Um, they've got you know Captain Marvel's coming into it. I my money is on my money is on Steve Rogers stepping down as Captain America and getting killed off. I have no uh, idea. I haven't been. I mean, I think that they're going to change up. I think we're going to have new characters taking on old roles, just like the comics, and I don't know how it's going to go over well with with. Tron SGW. We don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, did we see Teen Titans Go, the movie? No, no I want to. Nobody did. That was yeah, probably was only problem. made like 10 million bucks or something. I'll probably see it when it comes to the closer. We Where we live, there's a closer theater. It's cheaper. Well, actually, more and more, it's about the same price. But it's a lot closer to get to. And I'll probably wait until it comes to that one than running dollar, clear out. Dollar theater. Clear but far it's not away. a dollar theater anymore. It's like a $5 theater. Yeah, um, so it's, 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 it's about the same price as the big theater. But um, what, yeah. are you, what did you decide? Oh, you decided to do Steven going, Universe? Okay, this is going to be interesting. Steven, yeah, like... I should write my Asian-inspired fantasy because I'm Caucasian. You know, and that makes me... That's interesting to me because um, we have characters that are different, um, that are different ethnicities than us and different things. A couple of our pitches we have, uh, the characters are completely different races than we, we are. We actually had the one pitch we had. I think the, the leads were both... Uh, um, African American, Asian. Yeah, we didn't have any white characters other than a couple of the bad guys. I mean, it right. wasn't even. And it wasn't we were because we were trying to go bad no, guys. No, we weren't. We weren't. It was no, just, no, no, you we know, weren't trying to do. It just, it um, just seemed to fit. It, it was the characters like, seemed to fit better. Um, I mean, we had one pitch where it was, it was a lot of different people, different kinds of people, and we even had, we had twins. That wasn't. That, if you look at that one thing we had up here with our pitch, we did for the TV show for the Mecca, the Mecca Three thing. Oh yeah. Um, we Disney had pitch, characters yeah. that were different, and there was like the lead character was uh, you know a black girl, and then we had an Asian kid, we had a nerdy kid, and we had yeah, but wasn't we the two to... twins, Dawn and Dawn. Yeah, they but both we were named Dawn. But we weren't trying to. We weren't trying to go for the BK Kids Club. It was just because it was originally. It, <laughs> it was supposed to be no. It was supposed to be a a an homage to parody of uh, Power Rangers. So we had the characters kind of corresponding to. The original Power Rangers. Right, it was a which, reason. Yeah. We had reasons. But, you know, don't worry about it. Do what you want to do. And people get mad about it. Here's the thing. They're going to get mad about it no matter what. No matter what you do, someone's going to get pissed about it. So just do what you want to do. As long as you're not being disrespectful, you're not being, you know, you're not stereotyping, then they have no right to get mad. That's just stupid. Yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I, think there's over, I think there's oversaturation of live-action superheroes. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, we're getting to the point where it's just Akira like... Akira and Ghost in the Shell, one of the best animations. Yeah, you like both of those. Uh, I did. Um, Akira better than Ghost in the Shell. Fans of Steven Universe are going to get mad. Be, yeah, probably. Skinny and fit. We'll be accused of body shaming. Um, but I've already been accused of that several times because I, I think that she, re- she looks like she looks like a girl and that's apparently a bad thing. Do you feel comics journalists kind of suck up to the press? Yes. Yeah, we can There's talk no about that. There's no question about that. That's, that. That's good, they're, they're, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind. We were actually talking about they're how the they're the friendly media. Go the ahead. The friendly media. Yeah, I don't. There. I don't think there really is any. I mean, other than a couple of the newer sites that have popped up, you know, bounding trying in the very hard to be trying to be an alternative. Yeah. But it's it's a, the system is the comics uh, uh, journalism system is, is broken. They're basically. It's all op-ed pieces, and a lot of the writers are friendly with the comics publishers. Well, Neon used to be an editor, like an actual newspaper editor. So, um, yeah, I went back, you know, with Real News, and, you know, it does frustrate you that it's all op-ed masquerading as actual news. Yeah, their blog, their Tumblr, they're basically paid, like, uh, blog posts, Tumblr posts, op-ed. Well, okay, perfect example was... Um, the, uh, the, uh, article that we kind of roasted the other day with, um, Shira, it was from The Verge, 
uh, posing as an article, but it was basically the writer going out and finding uh, three or four oh, that Tumblr... got accused of not having factual evidence for right, it. Right, yeah. right. Going that out, it was right there in front right. of them. Going out and finding three or four different Tumblr artists to talk about how much they love Shira and the new Shira, and then fa- we found out that none of them, none of them, by their own admission, had seen the original show. And I'm like, this this shows up in the Google News feed. Like, this is not news this is just right an opinion piece it belongs and sadly it's almost all opinion pieces it's all, anymore. Uh, almost all opinion are know? we always creating stereotypes yes pretty much that's why i'm just like you know people always worried i'm not good enough yet i shouldn't start um what if i offend somebody i shouldn't start here's the thing anymore just breathing apparently offends people so it never used to be even four or five years ago it wasn't as toxic as it is now i've I never mean... seen it like this it's, in- it's insane i mean you didn't draw the hair the right color shade of so and so so i'm offended you know you gave her boobs i'm offended you didn't give her boobs i'm offended you know yeah i know it's gotten ridiculous um the black writer who got tired of only being offered to write black heroes by marvel yeah i think that's that's garbage i think i think if you're a talented writer i don't think i mean that's actually kind of insulting it's almost like you have to stay in your own lane. You're right. not allowed to. Hey, I write guy characters all the time, and I'm a woman. Yeah, well, yeah, by that, by that, yeah. By well, the th- internet's going to lose their mind when we bring Leo into it, oh, which God. I'll talk about Leo in a minute. Um, Okay, hold on. Stereotypes, yeah. Would you like a, would you like a live-action He-Man and Shears and Ears? You know what? They're, aren't they doing a live-action He-Man as it is? Uh, they're, re- they're doing a new movie, yeah. yeah. Uh, hold on, I'm looking. Uh, body oh, a... I saw about the body shaming thing because he looks skinny. I heard about that. And, you know, you, I have a friend who got really sick and she was always skinny to begin with and she got extra skinny. So we always talk about this, too. You see these videos go around on the Internet and the fat shaming videos are really terribly bad. There's so many of them. Like, I feel bad for because there's people finally feel good. Like, I look good today. I, look, I think I look good today. And then everybody shames them for it. Yeah. But they said to me they had the same problem with being so skinny because they were too skinny. Everybody's like, eat a cheeseburger. And they're like, I can't, yeah. I'm sick, you yeah. know, and they got it for the other way. So, yeah, I can see I have people. have stomach cancer. Leave me alone, you know. So, okay, hold on. Uh, let me see. My okay. Yeah, the Pharisees. Yeah, kind of. Here. What am I doing? I'm uh, checking things. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see. Christopher Priest. Yeah, Christopher Priest. Um, yeah. And there were, I mean, I remember, you know, when I first started reading comics, there were, there were black writers writing white characters and white writers writing black characters. And well, wasn't there a thing where Mark Wade was in trouble because he was writing black characters Mark and people Wade, were mad yeah, about Mark it? Yeah, Mark Wade got mad because, or uh, people got mad, mad at Mark him Wade for writing was basically a, a black Superman Now he'd say, character. you're right, I shouldn't write that. But back and, then um, he was like, I'm going to write it. This was like, this was like five or six years ago and he got in so much trouble uh, from uh, social justice police that he um, now he didn't he didn't back down though he finished the run I can't remember the name of the series that was either Boom or Marcosia or something but I remember people just like took him to task like you know white men have no business writing black characters and I'm like but now we've got like Tony Isabella out there you know going on about Black Lightning he created Black Lightning black, black character Black Panther was created by a couple of white guys you know um, I'd like to get the point where your writers are basically it's it's color blindness like i think i don't understand why you have to if have you're a good th- writer you're a good writer you, you have know? to write sameness to write good characters it doesn't make sense and that's insulting you know i mean you know what i'm saying yeah you can't it's just stupid uh Dwayne mcduffie yeah uh was he was actually a pretty cool guy um Dwayne mcduffie was he actually he did my um first portfolio review did he? Back in like the mid nineties, very, very. Um, I, I don't think I don't. I mean, I'm not going to speak for the you know people who are no longer here, but I, I don't think he would be happy with the way things are going right now. I don't know. A lot of people um, wouldn't be happy with the way things are going either. right now. It's just ridiculous. It's just like um, it's just getting it's just getting so crazy anymore. It's just and then it, it, then the rules change every day. It's like one day we're offended about this, but the next day that's okay, but we're offended about something else. So the next day what was okay is now offensive to us right. because you know I decided this month that uh, I'm going to be mad about this and you know. It's just, you can't even keep track. So my advice is don't give a shit and just do what you're going to do as long as you're not being disrespectful. Um, and as long as you're not being like, you know, painting things, you know, deliberately making characters to be stereotypes disrespectful. Yeah. Do what, do what you got to do. I mean, yeah. you're going to piss somebody off anyway. I mean. Yeah, Dwayne not... McDuffie was, everybody's going about Dwayne McDuffie. God, Sorry. Was, oh, no, it's okay. You just got to do what you got to do. Well, they're going to have a field day when we get our Leo character in here because yeah. we've got a character coming. 
in our story. And his name is Leo. We've been teasing him for a while now. Um, and Leo uh, is very, if you took like Captain Jack Harkness and mix, mixed it with Prince Poppycock and then threw in some David does Bowie. Know, does anybody know who Probably Prince don't. Poppycock and is threw now, in some like David he, Bowie. He's very that, that is Leo. And Leo likes everybody. Let's and, just put Leo yeah. is not discriminatory about who he, he likes to sleep with. And so, it, it yeah. It is played for comic effect, but we don't actually make fun of, we don't. Make fun of the fact that he he no, we've known people like this. swings both so. ways, but I mean it doesn't matter if he was gay or straight or bi. You he's know, some just people very, just really he's like Leo. The, yeah, they just like so they're gonna super. be like real, they're gonna lose their shit on that one. I am a hundred percent sure. I don't really care because I mean I've gotten to the point now where I think you know you have to find your audience, and I think if if the people reading your stuff are offended about everything, chances are they're not actually fans of your stuff to begin with. The people who are getting offended about everything in comics, I don't think they're actual comic book readers. I think they're just patrolling the internet to see what what offends them that was like that what's that guy's name on facebook and he does he has like the long red hair and he does like the the like the the videos where they're kind of parody videos like about yoga and stuff and he was doing the social justice warrior oh my god that and he was so, so good. funny was so i good. love him and he uh, was what like, is his name i can't remember he's a, he was talking about i'm a social justice warrior and today i'm gonna dish shout justice uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, I oh my god that guy's name he's so good well that's like uh, that person who was commenting on the sheer video and they're like well, you just, you know, about me wasting my time, it's just a cartoon. Why do I care? I'm wasting so much time. As the person watched the video and spent how much time writing reply, oh my says God. to me, I'm like, okay. We got like this ridiculous, I don't, did we publish it or not? We got like a nine paragraph essay on like gender studies and, and whatever, you know, pasting our comment. I almost, I almost commented uh, TLDR. Just like pfft, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks for wasting like three hours of your life on our video. Who cares? I thought about making Shonen Battle series with the majority of cast, female cast in the vein of Soul Eater, Fairy Tale, and it was just Rat Queens. I don't know if people would be pissed if I do so. You know what? Does it, it matter? Here's the thing: you're not copying those. You're doing it right. in the series in the you know the vein of. There's a difference. Uh, here's the thing: and someone says before, and it's true. It's all been done. Yeah. Everything's, been, Everything's done. been done. It's just what's your what is your spin going to be on it? And there's nothing wrong with doing those things and you doing those, kind of taking those kind of ideas, picking what you like and making a new story. People are going to be pissed no matter what you do. And at that point, I say just go ahead and do it because you might have a new twist on it. Because after we did ours, people compared us to different things and most of which we never even heard of. Yeah. And um, it was like, well, you know, I guess just it's kind of similar. Because, just run with it because we're like, you know, we, well, that was like even the title of the comic, you know, was, I guess, a Game of Thrones characters that were named that. Yeah, but you've had, had no that idea. name for years and years yeah, ago. Yeah, I had no idea that that was even a thing. So. Yeah, so don't worry about it. Just go and do your thing. I mean, don't worry so much about you're going to make people mad because you're going to make people mad no matter what you do. And yep. you're going to make some people happy, you know, no matter what you do. So you might as well just do what makes you happy and, and make tell your story. I think I do recommend is um, people often, and we used to get this in trouble with webcomics people all the time for this. You can niche yourself into oblivion. And what I mean by that is, I'm sorry, niche, because people say they don't like them to say niche. Niche yourself into oblivion. Because what happens is people are like, oh, it's a very niche audience. Well, okay, that's great. But you're starting out with an audience you know isn't going to be very big. I think you're better off going for things that are in the vein of things that are popular because people are going to be like, oh, because you can even pitch it this way. Yeah. If you like Soul Eater, if you like, you know, this, this, and this, you're going to like this because we took a lot of influence from that. Oh, I like that. And you're going to probably reach more people that way. And things are going up so fast. Yeah, no, Ghost in the Shell 2017. Um, uh, Ghost in the Shell 2017. Okay, so... Yeah, I, we saw it. I thought it was kind of weird that they had <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. But I understand. Here's the thing. Like, I mean, I guess I can see both sides of it because, I mean, traditionally she technically was an Asian character, but it was never really... She was a robot, too, so it was kind of like, you know... But then it was kind of an odd choice to, like... There was already controversy around it, and then have her, like... You know, she's an Asian girl who gets killed and comes back as Scarlett Johansson. You yeah, know? it was... That was kind of odd. I mean, I think they did... It. I don't think they... I don't think there's any, like, racist motive behind it. I think it was just a case of, um, you know, Scarlett Johansson's a name, and, and you know, she'll bring people to the box office. Right. Um, but it was kind of... Kind of like we use IP that's established because it'll bring people in. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of an odd choice. Let's make an adventure. Oh, my make... God. We did that kind of yeah, one but then panel this, once. Then this, video will get, then this video will be totally, like, delisted from... YouTube. Yeah, we'll have to do that sometime, though. Yeah. We actually did the Make Your Own Adventure thing as a panel once to teach world building. Awaken it was with funny. JP. Yeah, that was it. Wait, have you ever read the Queens, Rat Queens? I have not. Did you read Rat Queens? Uh, part of it. Some of it. Yeah. And I know the one artist, like, was off her gourd and she's going around, like, 
just being horrible to other people. Oh, the samurai Jack thing. Yeah, here's the thing. Everybody's so, okay, it's co- cultural preparation thing. Okay, there is a, and I keep getting into people with this because there is a difference. Intent. Yeah, intent is the difference. There is, intent is completely different. And a lot of cultures don't take offense to using their culture and, and doing things like, uh, and there was a story once and there was a little girl who was having a, a party and for a birthday and they had a geisha party, which is kind of weird that a little girl would have a geisha party anyway, but okay. But the mom went and did all kinds of research to make sure she was doing everything authentically, that they had the kimonos authentically, the makeup authentically, all this stuff. She researched it. And people on the internet had a cow about this girl doing cultural appropriation. But these other people chimed in and were like, I am Japanese and I don't take offense to this. And people in my country don't because it, clearly you're respecting our culture enough to go look into it right. and study it. And you're actually you're, doing us, you're complimenting us. And to us, we take this as a thank you. You know, the girl with the, the Chinese dress, people in China thought it was great. Yeah, and it's it, just a different look at how you look at culture the japanese and that's why you know i i mean we've heard about you know political correctness pushing into uh anime and manga culture i don't think it's going to get very far because the japanese who create 99.9 percent of it uh don't play this game right they, they and they they don't take offense to it and i think it's intent like the moana thing okay but you can't dress your your white girl or as, a, as moana and i'm like we go to Disney all the time, and I cannot tell you how many times I see little white girls as Tiana, little black girls as Aurora and Ariel and everything else, and no one cares. At the end of the day, no one gives a shit. Dress your kid however they want, whatever princess they like, because that's good. Okay, here you go. I'm going to go on my princess tirade for a minute. Uh-huh. I am so flipping tired of hearing that princesses are bad. You can't have princesses for girls because being, liking princesses is a bad thing. It's not feminism. It forces it's not- gender stereotyping that princesses are just helpless. You know what? And I'm pretty, like, and they can't be pretty. Well, not just that. It's just like you know. Well, you, well, they need a prince to save them. I'm like, oh, like how God. they do. Yeah, no, Have no, you? I mean, no. Cinderella was doing fine. I mean, she wasn't doing fine, but she's holding her own until the prince took her out of there. And you know, like all the other stories. Um, you know, Mulan kicked ass. Uh, Merida kicked ass. You know, I mean, she goes through the list, and it's like, what's wrong with my daughter wanting to be like Tiana, who yeah. works her butt off and, and accomplishes her dream? What's wrong with my daughter wanting to be Merida? She shot for her own damn hand. She don't need no man. You know what I'm saying? And telling girls they can't be princess, they, 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 like princesses is bad it's stupid it and stupid. telling girls they can't like moana because they're white is also stupid that, that and was... it's an insult to moana and the polynesian people yeah because who... you're like you can't you can't like it because you're not that's not yeah, you no. and they they um sorry i'm just <laughs> no that was the thing like there, there were actually uh white women writing articles about how uh people should not let their children dress as moana because it's cultural appropriation um and i'm like that's that, but you would think that would be like a compliment to the character that uh, you know, every kid, like, actually, um, I remember before the Black Panther movie, before the Black Panther movie came out, there was actually a little blonde haired kid that came to the one convention we went to and he was dressed as Black Panther. And yeah. I remember thinking to myself, cause we see like black kids all the time dressed as Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's Peter Parker. It Spider-Man. Us. We're it's like, Peter Parker. Oh, not hey, Ma- you did a good job. Yeah. Right. It's not like they're not staying in their lane. They're dressing as Peter Parker, Spider-Man, not Miles Morales, Spider-Man. And there was a little kid. He was probably eight or 10 years old. Uh, this is before Black Panther came out before it was a big deal. Mm-hmm. He was dressed as Black Panther. And I'm like, that's really freaking cool that this kid, yeah. his favorite superhero of all the superheroes he could go before to. Before Black Panther was popular. Before it was popular. He was Black Panther. Of all the superheroes that this kid right. could choose, he chose Black Panther. And so I, I think cool. cultural appropriation and that is bullshit. And it's about att- intent. If your intent is to mock and ridicule and just make fun of somebody, then yes, you're a dick. And that is cultural appropriation and you shouldn't do that. If your intent is, I really like this. This speaks to me. I really like appreciate you know, this aspect of their culture, this character or whatever, that is not culture appropriation. That is showing respect and, you know, and America itself is made up of how many different fun people and everything we have is culturally appropriate in some way. Every holiday, every, everything is, is a mash of several different things. Someone um, said about uh, Gem, you know what? I have not seen the Gem movie. I've seen parts of it because I can't make myself watch it because it hurts my soul. And I refuse to watch that shit because it's a CW special and I will not do it. I mean, as soon as I saw Synergy, I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. Here, someone has comments and I can't like, you know, here. You have to pay attention because you have to do well, this I'm stuff. Well, I'm trying to draw buff Steve Here's a neighbors. couple things that need uh, approved um, and one up above and I don't know what they said. Okay. Jasmine's uh, my favorite. Yeah, Jasmine's, I like Jasmine too. I mean, I like princesses in general and I just think it's it's, it's, it's wrong to tell little girls you can't like princesses because uh, some women think it's offensive to like princesses. I mean, and if you don't like princesses, you don't have to like princesses. I mean, hey, 
Princess Leia is a flipping Disney princess now, so kiss my ass. But you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, like princesses. You're allowed to. There's nothing wrong with you. I actually did an article on this and why stop telling people they can't like can't like princesses because it's bull crap. Yeah, I know. Um it's it's just gotten to the point where and the, the, the again, the people who seem to be the most offended are white women. Seems to be. Like white like white women, you know, are, are offended for everybody else. It's like go ask people if they are actually offended and you yeah. might find one or two people that are but like um yeah i used to, I, i'm a teacher too and i see it all the time kids would come to school and they would love characters that weren't their own you know in their own lane as you yeah, put it yeah and that's actually isn't and no that one cares. racist to like to keep to like to tell to tell little kids you're trying to break down these these racial barriers these cultural barriers they claim they're trying to break down and you're trying yeah but i no, there's not money to be made if we you know break it down because we got to complain about everything but you break these barriers down and i mean how cool is it to have kids just be like i just want to be my favorite character i don't care what race they are i don't care you know whatever and then be like oh hey sorry jimmy but that's uh cultural appropriation because you yeah. want to be black panther uh because i know you're only eight years old but you're white and you can't, you can't do that and it's you can be crap. any of these other white superheroes. It, it um, just it just makes me mad because it's like culture appropriation. I mean, like I said, if you're doing it to be an a hole, then you're an a hole and own that you're an a hole because you're an a hole. But if you're doing it because you honestly respect and admire something, that is not the same thing, and it, it depends on intent. And princesses, you know, I'm tired. That's like the Barbie argument. Oh my god. If I have to hear one more time about Barbie, and that's I, I think it's coming out with She-Ra too, is that basically the, at the end of the day. We didn't like the way she looked because we thought it was too racy and we got to tone it down because yeah. we can't have a character looking like that, like with her boobs and everything, because that, you know, that's just too much. And women should cover up. The same people who are always yelling about women should be able to wear what they want to wear and men should deal with it are the same people yelling women should cover up when it comes to a character. I don't understand that. They're, they're actually, a lot of these fe uh, feminists are calling for let's let's go bare breasted in the city, but men can't oogle us. And, and not just that, but but <laughs> women are going, I'm going to oogle you. I'm going to be like, what? what are you flipping do it you know right, like right. or part of me is gonna be like well hey you know they had enough courage to do that i wouldn't do it but go them but you know i'm just saying you know like i when i was a kid the barbie oh my god barbie you can't like barbie because barbie's body shape and barbie's too skinny and barbie's gonna give you you know all kind of dysphoria about your body image and all this other crap and the thing is when i was a kid i love barbie i played barbie all the time i play barbie and then i go play transformers and mask but I play Barbie all the time, and I didn't didn't judge my body on Barbie. I was like, Barbie's a teacher. Barbie, you know, is a businesswoman. Barbie's a, a flipping astronaut. She's out there. Like I said, I think I said the comments. She's out there and I land and putting flags in the moon and lunching with ET. I didn't think, hey, you know what? I better go hate Barbie because she's skinny, and I, I'm gonna have I'm gonna judge my body for the rest of my life based on Barbie. Yeah, um, then, you know, and this is, kind of goes back to the problems with Mattel, the, the Mattel's having right now. Sorry for missing comments, guys. This I know, is, like, going so fast. fast. They tried doing body-positive Barbies, which I don't... Here's I don't what, disagree with that. I don't disagree, because the dolls actually weren't that bad, because our daughter had a couple. But the thing is, is they, 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 they've they tried to cover all the bases of all the body types and all the... And they were, like, I think there were way too many yeah, Barbies. Yeah, they stretched themselves too thin. Because the they didn't want to exclude certain the, type, because right. then they get in trouble for excluding a certain type. So we had really skinny Barbie, uh, kind of chubby Barbie, black Barbie, Asian Barbie. Super uh, tall model Barbie, super, super short, petite Barbie. Right, and there were, like, 30 different, like, different body type Barbies. They and, overextended themselves. And and they're all in the bargain bin now because you know, only some of them sold, you know, right. and I think that was part of the problem with Mattel. And I think with Monster High, they were like, oh, these monsters are too scary and glamorous. We have to de-glamour them and make them less scary. And they tank that toy line. Right. So Monster High is gone. So they're not getting money from that. Well, then they had trouble with Bratz because Bratz were too, you know, slutty. Yeah. Bratz kind of were slutty. That'd be <laughs> fair. But I mean, I'm just honest, saying, I mean, were, it's just, you know, it's just why? I mean, they're, everything's dictated by a small few. And the thing is, people that were complaining most about Barbie, most of them didn't even have kids. Or no, they weren't they buying were them themselves. Just, like, they were like, you know, I don't have kids. Well, right. then why do you care? Because you know Barbie saying? is, why and do I, I, do, I do agree with this. Um, I've heard this from other YouTubers and I've, you know, s seen it for the, the argument that, that basically it's like a cultural, um, uh, what do they call it? Like a critical node. And I think, I think diversity in comics talked about being critical nodes, uh, being in the military where Barbie is like, Barbie is modern femininity in America. Like Barbie molds young minds. So Barbie has to be like overtaken. But here's the thing. You know, when Barbie came out, what special about Barbie was, if you watch like the, uh, the, um, 
Poison Mavis. Poison Mavis. They yeah. were talking about this. And then they were talking about on the Barbie, the one Barbie thing too, the one Barbie show. They did. But basically, like, girls were taught you had to be, like, only, you got married and you did this. And then the Barbie came out and Barbie, like, had a career and Barbie did different things. And the girls had a choice in what they wanted to be. Right. So it actually kind of was empowering for girls, kind of like uh, she was. Yeah. It was empowering for girls. And it's the, uh, actually the opposite of what they're claiming it was. Like, oh, it was causing girls to be, you know, to, you know, be down on their bodies and hate themselves. And it's like, no, actually it gave girls a lot of options. But like, oh, wait, Barbie's president. I can be president. You know, that's, yeah. you know, Barbie's an astronaut. And, yeah, I, mean, I wanted to be an astronaut so bad. Like, I can't tell you how bad I wanted to be an astronaut. I know. And it's like, if Barbie's an astronaut, I can be a flipping astronaut, you know? And it, it, it's the opposite of what they said. Go ahead and read some comments because I'm not paying attention. No, <laughs> no dwarf Barbies exclusion. They had shorter Barbies. Yeah, but they didn't go dwarf. Um, okay. People say what you want, enjoy what you want, which which was possible. It is. I think the internet makes. I mean, there there's definitely something for everybody. Um, yeah, I think that I was gonna say the same thing. Internet makes it. There's something for everybody. Just don't listen to what they say and like what you like and screw them. They're gonna is, tell you they're they're gonna like and do what they want and screw you. So you know, different yeah. races of Barbies. Yeah, there was different races of Barbies. Um, I collected Barbies, and we always had like they always had the Hispanic Barbie, they had the Asian Barbie, they had the black Barbie, they had the white Barbie. Um. Our daughter always preferred dolls that were uh, black or Asian. Her actually, her first American Girl dolls were the Bitty Twins, and she they wanted yeah. one was a black one, and one was an Asian one because that's what she wanted. You know, because yeah, you know, cause she didn't care. Totally fine. I mean, that's, she's like, I, I like mean, those ones. They're pretty. I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, seriously, it's it's. I, I think there's more damage being done by political correctness to keep people in their own lanes than there is, you know. Um, we're supposed to like what we want. We have our own culture in the USA. We need to stop copying others. Yeah, I think I think so. Well, here's yeah, someone's um, a tomboy. I was I was in between. I like would do girly things and I go tomboy things. I do play Transformers, Star Wars. I mean, I do She-Ra and He-Man. You know, I just I kind of just I kind of fell in the middle and just did whatever I wanted. And then there was that time period where I wouldn't wear a skirt for years because or dress because I didn't like it. And now I wear dresses because I like it. It just you know I mean be who you are and screw them. Um. Let me see. Yeah, Barbie was limitless potential. Exactly. But they look at it as Barbie is um, detrimental to girls because Barbie um, was supposed to make, make them think that they only could be a certain way. But I think it was the opposite effect on I mean, girls. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to speak We were supposed to talk about the one stinking draw or writing stuff. We're off on this other stuff. Well, yeah, but th this is this is interesting. That's though, true. Older Barbies, kind of, they, they kind of did just change their skin tone. It wasn't until recently that they kind of actually tried to make them look more like their, the, the, the ethnicity they were supposed to be. Yeah, it was just like, it was, yeah, it was like, it was almost like <laughs> the original, like, 80s, like, black Barbies look like, what was her name? Dolan's, the, Dolan's, the, the woman that tried to pass the white woman tried to pass herself off as being black <laughs> I forget her it name, looked, yes. it was like the barbie looked exactly the same they just made her darker it was like that's kind of insulting too but it's cheaper because mattel was like really cheap with the molds like they did not want to spend money like look at he-man like every he-man figure was made out of parts of other he-man figures they just repainted everything pretty much you know? yeah so you know because they realized yeah i think so it's more marketable i agree with you and that's what i was kind of telling you back to the writing thing was when you're worried about taking um elements from these different things that you enjoy and making a new story i say go for it and the reason being is because like back to what i was saying if people will be like well my my story is very uh niche and it's, it's to appeal to a, a small audience and it's like but then you're just then you're like complaining because no one reads your comic and it's yeah. because you deliberately you know made it small niche yourself don't do that i mean if you have these big like shows that you love and there's elements of them that you love definitely use it because you can say, like, hey, if you like, oh, would you like Soul Eater? Oh, my gosh, I like your Soul Eater shirt. You'll probably like my book because I like Soul Eater, too. And and for ours, Inuyasha was a huge inspiration yeah. in ours because I love Inuyasha. And I'll say, like, someone will be cosplaying as some Inuyasha character. I'll be like, oh, my gosh, you like Inuyasha? You might like this because it's a girl from our world that hops to a different world. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and I don't think there's anything done. wrong with that. I mean, it's, it's, it's been all done been done. It's been done a hundred times over. But you know, your your goal as a creator is to entertain your audience. Right. Okay. And the and more audience you have, the larger audience you can get, right. the better off you're going to be. And I think what's going on with comics now, especially, is... These creators think their they they think they're they're pulpit preachers now. They think their job is to preach to and enlighten the audience. That's like they're on a mission from God to enlighten people. 
with their belief systems, but it's not entertaining to be preached at. I mean, it's well, just, that's, it, I, think it's that's, I think that's a problem with the industry too, is because people are an escapist industry. It's like television, right. movies, video games, people deal with enough shit in everyday lives. You're constantly being yelled at about politics at, everywhere you go. You want to get away from it. And you want to read something fun and then everything there is shoved down your throat too. So it's like, can't get away from it at all. But, um, while I'm looking at some of the comments and stuff, I'm trying to catch up. Uh, well, that's true. Barbie being fat won't stop the hot girl in school making fun of ugly are. And you can be a pretty person, and then that's because that person's a miserable piece of shit. They're going to make fun of you anyway. Yeah. I mean, I can't... Okay, well, true story. When I was in sixth grade, um, we had... I, I think I told you this before. I had a real small class, and um, other girls would get picked on. There were some snotty little bratty girls and some boys in the class that would just pinpoint different kids to pick on for one reason or another. And when the other kids were picked on in class because this girl had glasses or that girl was whatever, I always still talked to them and was nice to them and didn't let, you know, didn't treat them like shit like everybody else did. But then when it came time to pick on me because I was a chunky, the red and red, redheads, we had like two in the whole school. And it was like me and my, my sister. And, you know, and I was like a little, I was a chunky girl. Did they, 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 they all, body shame you, Geeky? They body shame me all the time. Um, I had a guy in high school tell me they put my face out for Halloween to scare people away, who later actually was hitting on me by senior year, but that's a whole other story. So I'm like, you know, there's always some piece of crap person who's going to make fun of you no matter what you do, because the fact of the matter is their life's shit and they're, they have to feel better about themselves and make other people feel like shit. And that's, and that's going to happen no matter where you go. Yep. Preach it, geeky. No, I think, I think that's what's happening with, you know, a lot of the, uh, the political correctness. Oh, yeah, we hit 6,000 subs today. Thanks, everybody. It just kind of, like, happened. It was we've, so weird. Like, we've tried to write TV shows. We pitch TV shows. Uh, we have. We actually have. We have, like, several stories in the works. We should tell people some of the stories later. Um, Chris, wait, wait. See anything you want to answer? Because you're too busy drawing and making me do all the talking. Well, they want you to talk. Why? Because I get well, pissed I'm, trying, I'm, I'm, trying fun, to draw, I'm more I'm trying, fun than you are. No, I'm trying to draw. I'm trying I'm to so draw fun at parties. Buff Steven Universe here. Uh, <laughs> so it's a very rough sketch. Uh, DC Comics of He-Man and Sheer was good to read. Yeah, it was. Um, do, let's see. Of course, I'm just a sucker for mastermind villains. We're talking about the villain from Inuyasha, which villain from Inuyasha yeah. was really good. Yeah. Um, there was like, there were several villains I thought were good, but I like Inuyasha in general. I don't I know what it is about it. I like Inuyasha. Um, I also like, um, which I think what else I like, uh, I like so many different things. Mostly we have like our favorite anime, our favorite anime. Um, well, a lot of the, Im the, the look of our comic came from Final Fantasy games and, yep. uh, Last Exile. Yes. Is how a lot of the look came from. I freaking love Last Exile. I think I said before, it's like one of my favorite. So we, we take different things. So we take different things from different places and yeah. like, oh, I like this. It speaks to me. What do I like about it? I like the dynamic with these characters. And a lot of times I just try to make characters real. And I think that's a lot of the trouble people get into when they do characters is they're too busy trying to hit a certain archetype or certain trope or whatever that the characters aren't real. And I try to like think of it as, you know, how would this person actually act? You know, right. I know someone similar to this character and how would they respond to this? And a lot of the people, times people actually like our stuff because they say like our characters are relatable. Yeah. But I think what, what happens a lot in comics now, especially with everybody being so afraid of, of political correctness is that the characters don't come off as being relatable because they're afraid to be like, okay, well we have a, a black character or a gay character or an Asian character. Oh, if I make them unlikable, then I'm a racist because right, I'm a white right. writer. I'm a white writer writing a black character. But you can make the white guy bad. That's okay. Yeah, but you can make the white well, guy bad. White guy is always yeah. bad. Um, Especially if he's straight and white. Then he's always but bad. But then it's like you've got these two-dimensional characters that are like, you know, because everybody's afraid of offending someone. And usually who you're going to offend is another... Uh, I heard about the Barbie movie having Amy Schumer too. <laughs> oh, I God. heard about that. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Um, I have a sister in have body images related to Barbie obsession. Okay, well, I mean, I mean, I can see where it can happen. I'm just saying, I, I think that the whole idea that Barbies are all, are all bad because it's going to determine your self-worth is, is, I think a lot of people's self-worth are determined by a lot of things. And I think you can't pinpoint to one thing. There are some things that will make, okay, that's like saying every girl has body images, body image problems because of the, the certain actress is pretty or a certain model is pretty. I think there's always triggers for everybody. If you're a woman, you're going to have insecurities and you're going to have body issue image, Im body image issues. I don't care who you are. You're going to have it. It's just different triggers for different people. And I don't think you can lump it all into one or two things. It's just going to, it's going to happen. I mean, I, I have yet to meet any woman who has no anxieties about her body whatsoever. Yeah. Even that, that, you know, bitchy, perfect, perfect woman. She's probably smack. A neurotic talking. mess. And that's why yeah. she's, you know, bitchy, you know, all the time. Yeah. Aw, uh, thank Perfect. you, Nerd Wonder. 
I, I'm not trying. I'm just telling people what I think. I mean, I usually am very. It's actually funny because I'm usually very shy. She is. Actually, we go to conventions. I'm, and I'm the, the one, one that does all the time. I'm the one that's against the wall hiding. So we had to do Cards Against Humanity. It was very interesting because I was like, I, with, I'm not going to do that. With Nostalgia Critic. Actually, somebody mentioned Nostalgia Critic. Uh, yeah. So, and, and Matt so Mercer. Weird. Matt yeah. Mercer was sweet to me, though. He's he was, very, he was very like, nice. go felt, you. I felt so bad. Like, we didn't even know who he was. <laughs> no, I knew who he was, but <laughs> all our stuff was, what I was excited about was because he did McCree on Overwatch. Oh, my God. Yeah. He was but, like, oh, my um, God, my parents. Like, his, yeah, his he, parents don't believe him. It's like, yeah, what did we do this weekend? Oh, we, we hung out with McCree and at the anime convention played Cardi. But his, I feel bad. Like, our son, okay, speaking of being picked on, he got picked on so bad because people think he's making up stuff. Yeah, know, like, my parents no do stuff for Disney. No, they don't. My parents yeah. hung out with the guy who did McCree's voice at a con and played a game yeah. with him. No, they didn't. And they think he's lying and it's not yeah. true. So now he doesn't tell people things because they're he's, he's afraid gonna, of I'm going to try on. to get him on tomorrow. We have a couple of new games we want to play. Uh, um, God, I can't He's remember. actually really funny. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the game is. But some really creepy game he was talking about where, where people are taking happy pills in an insane asylum. So we're going to try to stream oh, that tomorrow. Oh, sounds like you would like, actually. <laughs> so. Um, I'm trying to guess. How do you come up with names, characters? Okay. Yeah, we actually were talking about that before. Um, I like Simone Addison, but I can't think what they why they have those names. Well, you don't always have to have a reason why you have names. I mean, like, some people, you know, I mean, your mom named you whatever for, you know, because she had a reason. But it might not be a reason other than that she liked that name. Um, I, I told you before what I do for names is, my son was doing it, too, and he was making up, because he writes stuff, too. He was making up names. He was going to actually, like latin roots and finding names i know right but it's... i would actually go to baby name finder like one of those baby, <laughs> baby why are those baby name finders because i'm a mom we all i used them you know even though we didn't end up using them for our kids names um our daughter's named after kingdom hearts and our son's named after legends of the fall because i just like the name tristan yeah but um we uh i use those and like i'll look up my name meanings like i have i want a name that means you know i want i look up main name for like sadness and then i'm like maybe a, a storm or something like that and i'll combine them so i'm not sometimes i use it straight as is sometimes i'll just combine them so they sound otherworldly i do it for like you know if it means like you know it's a, it's a name of an alcoholic beverage i'll look up like drunk nut or something like that and then what? come up you know seriously it's how I get drunk these names nut. oh my god I don't know like, exactly what I looked that's up that's like the adult was... version of Hat Train Your Dragon it's drunk nut <laughs> well like we had this drunk nut this, and coke this, snout we had this <laughs> drink called Lot or something like that in the comic and how I got it was looking up like weird things like alcohol or drunk and you know baby name that means drunkard or something like that you know and, and baby you, name that means you drunkard. can find stuff similar oh I'm telling god. you it's like Christian porn you're setting this kid up for freaking failure you know, your, your Steven Universe drawing needs to be as masculine as Duke Nukem. But that's how we come up with names. And, you know, you always sometimes you have meanings, sometimes you don't. I mean, it just could be the name that, that you like. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think, you know, I, I, I was going to tell us, I want to tell a story about my name because that sounds really, like, arrogant. I don't want to sound, like, you know, snotty. But how I got my name, of all things, is um, way, way back, long, long time ago. Um, they didn't have ultrasounds back then, so you didn't know what kind of baby. You didn't know if you're getting a boy or girl or anything that, so you can plan ahead. So I was supposed to be named Bethany up until the night before I was born. And a few hours, and I was born six weeks early. And right, a few hours before I was born, my mom had a dream. And all she remembered from the dream was I was going to be a girl and that my name was Cambria. That's all she remembered. Okay. So when she woke up and I came like shortly after, that's what she named me. So, I you mean, some like names a... have meanings and some names are just like, you... I had a dream and it sounded cool. So I, I used it, you know? You don't look like a Bethany. No, I look like a Cambria. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you said someone says since I came to the U.S. more than a decade ago, I'm surprised how, sens how sensitive most people are these days compared to ten years ago. You know, even five years ago, even, even three years, years ago, ago, we are constantly talking about that too. We're like, what the heck is wrong with people? Um, it was so weird because you know I, the comic YouTubers are 100 percent correct. It's only been the last like four or five years that everything has gone crazy political because we kind of stepped away from comics for a while. Uh, we worked on some other projects and then we kind of got back into the comic scene and it was like, Oh my We've God. We've always like, had some extremists, but not to the yeah, point. Not, not like it is now, you know, uh, people weren't getting punched at conventions for having different beliefs. Uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely insane, but, you know, I mean, we kind of saw it coming because we were actually, you know, uh, involved in like the New York publishing scene. Right. And we knew people were far left, but they weren't, like it wasn't the point it, it, it wasn't as ridiculous as it is right now and then we kind of started looking at the mainstream comic industry like oh my god it's like live journal just like took over live journal tumblr all these oh, yeah, artists took over mainstream comics and it's just like freaking weird like what happened um 
We were talking about naming. Yeah, na- behind the name. Yeah, I would go to those places and I would search like name meanings and then work backwards. Like instead of saying, here's what's the name, what does it mean? I would search the meanings of names and look for those names. And they give you like different language names like Hebrew or, you know, Greek or English or whatever. And I would combine different things to we get something unusual. Sorry, it's it's disappearing quickly. We Happy Few. Yes, We Happy Few. We're going to try to stream that tomorrow. We have a review copy of it. Yeah. And we're going to try to stream it. It looks freaking disturbing, and I don't know anything about it except we've got clowns and happy pills. So we're going to try uh, to do that. The character is drunk nut. Yep, that's right. Drunk nut. <laughs> Actually, I use it. Oh, my God. Like... Somebody else likes Speed Racer live yeah, action I... movie. I freaking love that movie. I'm like its biggest. I'm like one of the only fans it has, but I, I do like the Speed Racer movie. I think it's like the closest. It is like a literal translation of the anime, warts and all, to, yeah. uh, you know, the screen. And I I know you love it. it. I, I do love it. It's so Cambria underrated. is Latin for whales. I've also heard it was like, uh, it means like rock or stone, too. Um, we spell it differently. She's got rocks. We spell it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like rock. I, uh, I strong like rock. And we spell it. I, it's spelled, mine spelled with a K and an E instead of a C and an I. But yeah. Um, there's actually, a, you know, there's actually county in the state. That's Cambria County. People make fun of me for that. My one teacher used to say, "Okay, county." Um, let me see. How dare he assume you're? Uh, I'm, I'm reading stuff. Sorry, guys. That's why I'm not talking. Yeah, I know. I'm to read it. Uh, yeah, it got really. I, I agree. When election time, there's a truck. When election time came. It seemed to got, you know, it got way worse than it's ever been. Yeah, I've ever seen I think. It. I think just people lost their mind. I think. You know, honestly, and again, this is coming from people that, you know, do, you know, tend to lean left. Um, I, I just don't think that that the thought of, you know, uh, the Republicans taking the White House really occurred to people. I thought they thought it was too ridiculous. It couldn't possibly happen. We had, you know, eight years of Obama. Um, it never happened. Ha ha ha. And then then when the reality sunk in that, like, a lot of the country wasn't happy, um, just everybody started freaking out and losing their right. mind. You know, but instead of like working together, like, okay, people feel disenfranchised. Uh, there's a reason Donald Trump got elected. Let's, let's uh, talk about this and figure out what we can what do, we can do to together make it for everybody. to make America better for everybody. And it just became this huge, like, so I, I instead of, I decided that I'm going to call people that are extremists on either side, fringies. So the that's fringies. my new word for them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to label them with alt-right Nazi or SJW. I'm just going to call them fringies. So I think a lot of people get um, a, a wrongfully labeled, uh, you know, when they shouldn't be labeled as those things. So I'm just going to call them fringies. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to try to make comments here. Um, do you use iPad Pro? Yes, that's what he's using right now. It's yeah, an that's iPad why. Pro. <laughs> so an Apple Pencil. Um, Cali Weevil up is coming to theaters. Yes, I heard that. I heard they were doing that. I know they're bringing that. They brought the Sailor Moon uh, movies back out, too. Yeah, I love the Sailor Moon movies. They were awesome. Hey, like, yeah, um, name your son Plo Kloon. That's awesome. I like Super S. Um, what happened to Plo Kloon? They're naming their son Plo Kloon. That's cool. Really? Mm-hmm. Like for real? Plo Kloon. He was cool. Well, we named our daughter Kyrie after a video game, so I'm yeah, not gonna so say a word. Um, reason Donald Trump got elected. Ahsoka, Ahsoka, uh, yeah. I can't even speak. Ahsoka. Yes, that'd be awesome too. Our daughter likes to say her name because um, it's Japanese, and she tells everybody that because they always say uh, they always call her a different name. They always call her Carrie or something like that. She's like, no, it's Kyrie. It's Japanese. <laughs> so even though she's not remotely Asian. Um, what software are you using on the iPad? Uh, this is Clip Studio uh, Pro, which I, I like, or Clip Studio Paint, whatever. Clip Studio. It's uh, it used to be Manga Studio, now it's Clip Studio, and the iPad version is exactly like the desktop version. Like you can actually go back and forth between the two, which I like. Um, I'm still trying to get my pen set up though. There's, I'm just not real like this isn't my smoothest inking job at all, but I'm trying to get used to using, you know, the screen being smaller and using the um, using the pen. Uh, let me see. I'm looking. What do you think when Mrs. Bellum 2016 reboot? Wait, what am I going? I'm like here. Um, what do you think they got rid of Ms. Bell? Oh, yeah. I thought that was a weird choice. Tr- for uh, Powerpuff Girls. Oh, Powerpuff Girls. I okay. think pow- the Powerpuff Girl reboot was a bad idea. <sighs> it, was a bad idea. It, was, it was a completely But you know what? They still look like Powerpuff Girls, though. They did, but it just, it was oh, just not. Tell them the funny story about, about uh, Powerpuff Girls and the caricature girl. <laughs> Oh my God. I used to do, okay. So I used to do caricatures at different festivals and whatnot, like years, 10 years ago. And we had this girl wanted to be a Powerpuff girl back when Powerpuff girls were big. And I'm like, do you want the, like the big eyes? And she's like, yeah. So I drew like her human face with these God awful Powerpuff. She looked like one of those, she looked like uh, a, what the Webkins or whatever. Whatever those like freaking weird dog cards you get with the distorted. Yeah. 
And, and that she was, she was like, thrilled. I, I drew this thing. I'm like, what in God's name did I just make? And she loved it, though. Yeah. Okay, I thought of making my series have a huge showing sisterhood vibe, but I'm not the exact gender for it, should I ask? Yeah, you know, you can always do that. Um, I think you're when you're, when you're doing something like that, you're probably better off to ask people you know, because um, there are going to be some quirks about that that you might not, you know, understand if you're not part of that that group if you, you didn't grow up around that group you weren't grow up part of that group right. there's gonna be some quirky things that you probably don't understand or don't know about and i think it's always best to go get do research and ask somebody if you're not sure about something always do that because then if someone comes back and accuses you of not doing your research you're like oh hell no i did my research so definitely talk to people and and, and look into things if you're going to do something like that uh my favorite game is kingdom hearts yes we love kingdom hearts and then someday supposedly next year we're getting Someday. third one, and they be- well, better well, well, that, that better be the case, or I'm gonna be really they keep mad. They pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. Speaking of speed racer, it's really a great looking movie. Same to Tracy. Yeah, that was really cool. Actually, I, I think Tracy, Tracy actually Tracy was years. underrated too. Yeah, it was. Um, um, visually, it was really good. I mean, it just was kind of you know, uh, Madonna was kind of like an odd choice, but uh, it was well, that's because of the name. Yeah. Let me see what else. Um, I'm trying to see what's going on here. Um. Because she's too sexy. Yeah, uh, you, th- that's probably why they did. Because that's that's the vibe I'm getting on everything. Is we've got to censor everything down. Because we think that the costuming is too sexy. Or the boobs. I mean, I'd love to see what they do with Jessica Rabbit now. Oh, I'm sure God. they'd ruin that somehow. She'd never get, um, But yeah. they have to tone it down. Because you can't have that. Because it's too... It, 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 women shouldn't be treated that way. And you can't fight in the costumes or look good. You can't wear a she, costume like that. You she's know? not and, bad. She's but it is. that way. It's just... Yeah, that's right. I find right. nothing wrong with Jessica Rabbit. Mm. Um, but I'm just saying, it's like, you know, they're so, they're trying to censor everything down. I think that's where the she right issue comes from. You too. know, it used to be, it used to be that the, the right were the ones who were censoring everything. They censored everything. And now we're getting it from the, the, the extreme left where, you know, it might possibly potentially maybe offend somebody. So we, we're not even going to go there, you know, and here they go. There's one. I think it'd be hard. Uh, yes and no. It's been if done. You're, how you're hard would it, how hard would it be to create an entirely new superhero comic book universe outside of Marvel, DC or Marvel? Malibu did it. Uh, they did it in the '90s when the comic book industry. Well, was I mean, very, they mean today. In today's in today's, today's marketplace. Um, in today's market, uh, there, there's no way. Um, I don't think because I don't. I mean, I think you could do it on a smaller scale, but I think you know the the direct market being the way it is right now is it's just it's not. The numbers aren't there. The people aren't there. The readers aren't there anymore. And the market, I don't think, could... It's oversaturated now. It's oversaturated now, yeah. I don't think it could really absorb another... Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy VII reboot? That's a good question. Uh, They keep changing... Wait, I'm just waiting for them to lie and say, oops, psych, we're moving it back further. Oops, psych, because they keep doing that. We're moving it back further. Like they did that They did to us with uh, Stranger Things. Oh, it's coming this Christmas. Oh, nope, nope, next summer. Yeah, I know. Well, that's probably more, like, to do with... Uh, apparently they were gonna try to do the or, or spend more money on special effects this time because people complained about uh, right. season two being kind of cheap. Rocketeer, someone's about Rocketeer. I Rocketeer love the Rocketeer. Rocketeer is one of my favorite movies. I absolutely love the Rocketeer. I love everything about the Rocketeer. I love the the era. I love. I just. I love the Rocketeer. I just. Hell, I'd wear a helmet and dress up as Rocketeer. I mean, I'm allowed well, to. That would be kind of cool. And I totally actually. would. I would totally rock the Rocketeer because I, I, I love would. Rocketeer. Um, I would not dissuade you from doing this. You draw the same cross between Steven and Markiplier. <laughs> oh, my God. God. It does. It does look like... Does it look like Markiplier? Oh, my God. I guess it does. So, Markiplier, Steven Universe in real life is Markiplier. Everybody's trying to create a cinematic universe anymore. Um, with Valiant. Yeah, Valiant is kind of... Okay, where, where are we going out here? Valiant is creating a cinematic universe. Yeah, Valiant, I mean, I think... Because Valiant, I don't know if I really consider them a new universe. Because they were around in the 90s. Uh, Jim Shooter started in the nineties and a lot of the stuff they're bringing back, you know, Valiant probably does. I mean, I would actually, I would actually agree with that. I think Valiant probably has the best shot. Um, I think if they don't exceed their reach, like they can't be the Marvel universe because that's like way too big, but if they keep it to like four or five characters and they, they really have a couple of solid movies. I think they probably could. I think a lot of trouble people get into is they do try to go farther than they should and then they end up hurt themselves the they overextend of- themselves they try to compete with marvel and dc and like just put out like a ton that's kind of what happened with malibu they were like right. churning crap out like crazy they had tv shows and everything at prime and 
you know, these characters back in the 90s, but um, they just kind of burn themselves out and then Marvel bought them out. Well, so. that's usually what happens. Uh, what's the point? Okay, a very sexy character whose brains and brawn same thing as Shira. Yeah, well, you can't have that anymore. Don't you know this? You can't. You can't have that because somehow that's a bad thing. And if you say that you can, you can be. You know, what's wrong with being a woman? What's wrong with you know having the boom and the brains? They'll just the say. The brains. They'll just say to you, "Well, you're body shaming women who look masculine." And I'm like, nobody's body shaming anybody. No, there like, are women that looks no mad. There are women shame. out there that look masculine, but when the average cup size in the U.S. is a C or D sized cup, having a flat chest is very unlikely. You know, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, but I mean, it's totally that's, that's It'd be cool. easier just, to fight. I will say that because man, those those puppies can just like get well, a mind of their own going well, on. Well, didn't it. like warrior uh, uh, princes princesses or something like I read somewhere that they. I mean, this is just me being a dumb man, but I thought that I read that they actually used to like perform mastectomies just to be able to shoot bows and arrows i don't know because they don't get in the way i'm telling you straight up like i know carrie fisher may have taped her boobs down for different the different movies because clearly not jedi but the other ones they make her tape them down because no jiggling in in space there's no Um, no underwear yeah so we don't want jiggling um Uh, r.i.p carrie fisher she, I don't know when they're going to do a She-Ra trailer on YouTube. I am very... They're kind of hiding it. I don't know if they're hiding it or they're right up against it. Because, I mean, that's the thing that's really odd, well, too. Well, that could like, be, too. Like, you know, they had the perfect opportunity at Comic-Con to bring she out, and they didn't didn't do it. And, um, you know, I don't know if they were hiding it. I mean, because they would have had a panel, you know, scheduled. But it does seem odd that we're only three or four months away from We're seeing this, nothing. And we're seeing nothing. We saw the Dragon Prince, and that's a little bit after yeah. she Dragon, Dragon Prince, Prince looks, looks awesome. really good. Dragon Prince looks really, really Dragon good. Dragon Prince looks like what she should be. Yeah. Um, so I don't know when that's going to be. And like I said before, if she turns out to be good, I will be the first one to say she is good. But I'm not holding out hope when I see who's working on it. And I'm not talking yeah. just about Noelle Stevenson and some of the other people, too. I'm yeah, just like, eh. Uh, did you guys read Sky Captain? Yes, love Sky Captain Sky also. Awesome. I think that was underrated book, uh, or underrated book movie. I think it's amazing. We went to the theater to see it. We love it. I watch it often. Um, Lone Ranger. I like Lone Ranger a lot, too. It's a good one. Yeah, I've seen um, Lone you Ranger never, like did, did you see Lone I Ranger? Once, yeah. It's really, really good. Well, they're bringing, aren't they bringing, um, the Lone Ranger back as a show now? Are they? I thought I heard I they know. were. I um, no uh, okay, let me see. Let's, oh, I can't. Well, please k- create kick-ass anything. If, if I'm an inspiration for kicking ass, then I'll take it. Because, you know, I'm just tired of people telling people they can't. Who they, they get mad for you telling them who they can and can't be and what they can and can't do as they tell you who you can and can't be and what you can and can't do. Yeah, I thought the whole I thought the whole purpose of all this mm. was to... to um, Sorry, I want to answer this question real quick. What are the steps you take to create a co- coherent magic system? Well, Play what, role-playing games. That's basically, <laughs> yes. Pretty much what you know what you did was I relied more on you from the games you've played and stuff like that. Do research there. Find out what other you know, in books what they have done. How we do ours is equivalent exchange type magic. Um, yeah, you can't, it you is. can't do magic in ours unless you use a, a catalyst. Now, it's important to know that if you don't use a catalyst, you create, you create yourself some bodily harm. And if you do any anything significant without a catalyst it'll drive you insane and you'll die which is yeah. going to be important later uh, but i can i can tell you where the where i got that concept was actually the dark sun uh ad and d where from dark sun you know magic was like if you use magic it basically killed everything around you because you had to draw mm-hmm. the draw the magic yeah from, it makes sense you're taking yeah. it it's kind of yeah you're, yeah because you can't create or destroy energy you just transfer it so um I was kind of like with Ren. It's like okay, because we didn't want we didn't want a we didn't want a mage character that was just like ungodly powerful that could just zing spells off. Like you look at Harry Potter, the Harry Potter films is like like ridiculously unlimited magic. You right. know, like I mean, it's cool. Where's it you coming have, from? Yeah. yeah, you have wizards fighting wizards and all that. Okay, so their wand breaks, they can't do magic. But really, it's kind of like the Superman situation where they're like so ridiculously powerful that right. you know you, they can't really you know they can hang with other wizards and it's not weird. But when they're hanging with normal people with muggles, it's kind of like. You know the Muggles have no chance, but Ren's the only mage, so we had to yeah, make sure that we he explain was. That in the story. Yeah, he was kind of on. I mean, he was powerful, well, but people he still think, had yeah, limitations. Know of. But yeah, so the, the, you can what we use for ours is the equivalent exchange, which you would see with like you know Full Metal Alchemist yeah, something like yeah. that. Uh, we don't go as gory as that, but like that. Um, and I would just say study different uh, different fantasy books, different magic systems. Like you said, different uh, campaigns right. or like different role playing games, different games, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm surprised. Um, yeah, well, if Netflix does it 10 weeks prior to release, it should be pretty soon that they would start. Next month, maybe. Now, there hasn't been anything since they dropped the, you know. Um, is it going to get more dislikes? I don't know. It depends on if it's good or not. I mean, because honestly, the trailer, the trailer might 
drop and it might be like okay this doesn't look too bad i mean i'll, I'll completely give it that thundercats roar i watched it and it was so freaking insulting just the whole tone of it I was I like it. i got my magic slicing stick i'm like oh my god just go lay down i'll slice you with your yeah right stick, like you know? i mean yeah dragon not prince that i condone violence awesome unless i'm dishing it dragon okay dragon prince so everybody was like again you had the the pc brigade your fringies going on about like dragon prince is all going to be about men and there are no women in the show they were and they I, were flipping out and i'm and, and we've got this kick-ass assassin I'm, and they don't say character. the elf character i'm pretty sure is a girl and that one person commented on that thread they're like but from the backside that looks like the one character is female well we don't know what they're it's calling it prince and it's all men it's like i think the one might be a girl and i'm pretty sure it is a girl but even if it was all men my comment to that was well she was mostly women and they're bringing that back so what's your problem with it yeah um i don't know if they'll get more dislikes than thundercats i don't think thundercats is going to get more dislikes than she i think just the tone because shira i think what we're it's looking still at kind of quasi trying thundercats yeah. was like gumball yeah thundercats was just ba basically i think i think shira is actually going to take itself pretty seriously it's just going to have heavy-handed political commentary um again that's just a speculation i have no idea uh gumball or uh, uh thundercats yeah gumball might as well be it was basically parroting the original series which had a huge fan base and that did not set well with people mm -hmm. the fact that they were mocking basically mocking the original show right that's what people don't like didn't set well um do you know people. the possible new netflix avatar series where it's twins with the bending powers no i didn't hear anything about that um i don't really i don't really know much about that one i have to look into it sky captain the style of my yeah it kind of reminded me of that too like the old yeah i would say sky captain looks like that wouldn't you it's very similar to the old uh, the superman yeah because we used to have those on, I used to have them on DVD. They, they'd run them on TV. We had like the little box set with those. Um, let me see. I look forward to watching it. Dragon Prince. Yeah, I think it looks really, really good. I think that's what She-Ra should have been. She-Ra should have been the Dragon Prince. But anyway. Yeah, Dragon Prince does look really good. Um, New Avatar. So I could see them doing a new Avatar. I mean, I, I could. I hope, yeah. Korra didn't really get a, I just really I didn't, didn't like Korra. Sorry. I didn't just like Korra like either. It. No, I did catch an episode or two of the second season. I, you know, we dropped out of the first season. I caught an episode of or two of the second season i'm like oh look the humor returned like we actually have a sense of humor now and that that's what kind of killed the first season for me for Korra was like avatar was such a fun it was very serious show. i mean Korra. yeah Korra was just very like right out of the gate was very serious and i'm like this just isn't the same i get they're trying to be more adult but it just it doesn't even feel sometimes like the same universe right. it was just kind of like eh, see okay. I, um i uh, thundercats were not a ghostbusters fan felt with the 2016 reboot yeah i think that's what's gonna happen i think these people that are like you know was well, not for you and it's just a cartoon show geez get over it when it comes around because it's always gonna come around yep. it's always gonna come around if there's something new because i mean right now it's all reboots but the, the few new things that they have are gonna come back around and when they do and they look like this like what you're doing they're gonna get pissed oh it'll never <laughs> so, it'll never look like this this will never happen uh, so, um, <laughs> this, this will never happen never ever ever but it's fun to speculate pineapple on pizza, um, pineapple and pizza. Uh, uh neon says yes i say is sometimes uh, because I know he likes pineapple pizza. He just had it the other day. I did, actually. Okay, good. for the main I, cast, I want to make an effort to make the female characters different from each other. Say if one is five, six, six, one is four. Yeah, you know, a, a lot of people times people tell you, too, um, that they, they use that whole, you see it a lot, but it's actually a good rule of thumb. Um, and I think that, no offense to you, Neon, but you ran into this problem because a lot of your characters look the same, is that you go by the silhouette. <laughs> they do. You go by the silhouette. No and... offense to you, but you're drunk. We've talked about it. Yeah, I know. I, and I did. And I think if I could do things differently now, I definitely would would change it up a little right, bit. Right. If we do, know. we do, we do, which we're, we're thinking about doing something with it on uh, YouTube. But um, we change it. But yes, I think there, there's, I think it's actually better to have characters look different because one, not everybody's going to look the same. And two, um, they always do the silhouette test where if you can do a silhouette of your character and know which one it is by the silhouette, then you're pretty good because yeah. if they all look the same, then, you know, people aren't going to be identified and there's something that makes them stand out. So look into that. Um, let me see. Oh, when Wonder Over Yonder did a He-Man reference in the actual style of the old show. Was that one of the ones she worked on or not? Uh, I don't know. I know Noelle Stevenson did work. She did a couple episodes of it. I don't know what she did. But... I'm looking. Okay. Let me see what else is going on. I'm trying to look what's going on. Speaking of which, how do you decide if you want to make a character male or female? No, it's okay. You can ask questions. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just depends on what you want to do. I mean, I really don't know. I just kind of know if I want to make a character male or female. You have to, you have to have the exact... Leo, who the kind of little bit of both. You have to have the exact ratio of male to female characters... 
uh, straight to gay characters, no, black to white characters. That's not uh, true. Everybody has to be every because it's completely realistic that in any group of friends you always have the exact golden ratio of. Well, I don't even know what the golden ratio is supposed race to be. Is but and, um, and, and, uh, even though you might only have two friends, but they better represent everything. Yeah. Right. Um, speaking. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's maybe I think it depends on. I'm trying to think how we decided. It's kind of just like what I. Th- felt fit best or what i felt balanced it the best i really don't know yeah i think it was more balanced because i mean and just kind of like just the story kind of dictated like with the avatar and star wars was mostly you know boy character i'm talking about two girls you know but you know this is to like the the three guys and stuff but um it just it just depends star wars you know leia and then she had was luke, was luke and han all the time i think it just depends on what you think fits for your story i, yeah. I really don't have an answer for that other than like I think maybe that's you know the, one of the big difference between differences between a lot of the shows now compared to what you know the movies now. It used to be that the the characters would serve the story, and now it's almost like we create the characters first, or what this ideal cast should be first, and then we sort of shoehorn them into a story. Now, I do think the characters should lead the story, but I don't think I think that, so too. I think characters definitely should lead the story. But I don't think you should be like, well, we have to make sure we have an exact, the exact right ratio. Yeah, of I would say worry about people. worry about your characters and who they are. Worry about your story, and not so much about well, how, what's my ratio. Um, I, I honestly think I just think you need good characters and a good story. And honestly, at the end of the day, I think story carries it because you can have the prettiest art in the world, but if your story's balls, no one's gonna read it. So people are always worried. Well, my art's not the best. Um, I think I worry more about the writing. No offense to you or anything. I mean, because um, you work on the writing with me. Sometimes. Yeah, no, I, I actually would agree with that, and I think this is where comic book artists, you know, sort of became like second second to the writers. Is you can have a really good story with like stick figure art. And you look at a lot of the animated series, and the story does carry. People will be invested in uh, simplistic art if the story is good enough to overcome the deficiencies in the artwork. Um, you know, and that's not minimizing the artists at all because the artists, you know, do have to carry the story. But I mean, if you wonder where the, the flip flop happened, now where I got angry was it. It went from being, you know, it was all about the art and the story was meh. It was basically a lot of the comics in the 90s were like pinups. Right, they um, were. They were pinups with words thrown on. I mean, they were... They would draw it first and make the scripts around it. Yeah, or they'd bring somebody in to throw some right. words on the page, you know. Uh, but now, like, I think artists almost have become minimized to the point where they're just the grunt workers for, for writers, which... Mm-hmm. Because writers are now getting top billing, which is fine because, you know, it is their story. Yeah, what's but your problem with writers? No, no, no. But it's, <laughs> I do it's also like, I it's all, also it's almost like the artists have become sort of interchangeable now compared to the superstar status the artists had in the right. 90s. So it's basically we flip-flopped the roles. Um, and I think, you know, the right because I have geeks over here like, God, I'm bored. No, Stop talking. my back hurts. But no, like, uh, you know, the writers too, a lot of them have um, agents, literary agents. I think they look at it as sort of like, uh, again, stepping stone into other media. So they're looking at like the comics projects as like part of their bigger portfolio to sell stuff. And the artists are just kind of there to see out the right, vision. They're out, de- yeah. A lot of times they don't own anything. They're just there. I'm, so, I'm pointing some stuff to him. Oh, your art style reminds me of A's action cartoon like J.J. That's that's why I drew Steven Universe like this. He's we were doing to, it on purpose. Yeah, this is on purpose. And then you should put it on the internet and say, here's my Steven Universe fan art. And oh see what happens. Oh, my God, no. no. <laughs> What's the most difficult body part to draw for you? <laughs> no, no, be good. <laughs> you should, you're going to draw, well, st- draw, not drawing some of these body parts. We're going to have discussions. Uh, the most difficult, um, I would say say probably hands i think hands, hands are always what people hands say. are hard um because hands like i mean i just fudge it and you look at a lot of like i mean especially in this because drawing is a very simple drawing compared to what i usually do um but you look at a lot of uh uh you know the 80s cartoons especially like they they're, they're, they fudge the art is like they give the illusion of a well-drawn hand because the animation's moving so fast you can't see that actually now one thing i will give filmation props for is that their anatomical drawings were very very good, but they would reuse the same footage over they would, and actually. over and over they again. They spent a lot of time on it, but they were getting their, they're getting their money's worth from that. Um, let me see, token everything character, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, I'm looking through your comments here. Yes, I, I really think Dragon Prince looks really really good. I still think that's what Shira should have been. Um, so yeah, they lost Tumblr, lost it when they made Rose thinner. Ironically, yeah, it turns we out, were joking spoiler about Spoiler alert! Turns out that Rose was actually a skinny. Uh, diamond <laughs> originally so she wasn't she was still heavier but not, not really she's yeah, actually she pretty, pretty skinny yeah. i guess 
Uh, yeah, people don't come from sales. Yeah. yeah. Feet are hard. Feet, yes. I used to practice drawing feet and hands for fun because I used to like drawing those. I had a whole portfolio with nothing but feet and hands in it because I actually Literally, thought they—I thought they were this. so so interesting to draw. So I used to draw there's, them. There's a, and I, I actually had a book, uh, a couple of books by Bern Hogarth where he talks about he breaks it down into shapes. I always like the name Hogarth. And um, it's fun. And uh, he he breaks it down though into how you know the people look at it as like a solid object, but it's really like a yeah. bunch of movable part, like fingers or. Well, that's actually, what I do yeah. when I make I make character pillows, and a lot of times that's what I do. I break it down by shapes, and I didn't learn to do that really until you showed me to do that. But that's another story. Um, uh, very few cartoons which have characters drawn in a realistic art style. Um, I th I honestly think it's because of expense. I think it's because of cost too. I, do. I think it's expense. What's the hardest part? Of world building. I don't know. I mean, for me. A lot of it because a lot of people like they, they make these languages up and they do all these amazing things and i'm sitting back here like uh because I, I don't do all that so i mean I, I i don't know i mean it just depends on the person i guess what do you think the heart what do you think coming up with new ideas um, trying to think of things that haven't been done remembering what we did before because a lot of times like we actually have had readers call us out on mistakes yeah we've done that before that's not really um, that's not really world building though world building like when we create what we create i mean Trying to just be internally to, consistent, I think. Yeah, consistent. Like, trying to you know, be like, actually let's, we want something new that people, you want something that people, you know, aren't going to be like, oh, that's a rip off of this or that's a rip off of that. You know, something that's different. But um, I think it depends on the person because people like make up whole languages and whole e economic systems and things like that. Uh, and to like, me, that makes my brain hurt. Yeah, I think so it's So to kind me, of that would be hard. Too, uh, um, sometimes. I mean, that's just personal opinion. But. We focus more on the characters. Yeah, so, well, that's where I think Avatar, you know, really kind of excelled at that was... Yeah, muscular backs are hard to draw. He used to, he used to study anatomy books. That's kind of what he's actually pretty good at. But it's, I spend, normally, just disclaimer, norm, not on webcomics so much, but I usually spend a lot more time on stuff than... Uh, fan art reminds me of Plastic Man. <laughs> I've turned into Duke Nukem. Well, I don't know, because Steven Universe looks kind of like he's got the Plastic Man hair. Um, we Bear Bears is one... Uh, well, you know, I, I, the world magic. I was coming. I was going to read this okay. next one. Thought making the world have magic as a tool of everyday life, but the people who practice it immensely treat it as an art form. You know, you can do that. That kind of reminds me of almost like you said about Harry Potter earlier. Like yeah. it's their everyday life. You know, they use it, but then there's the people that you know are like you know higher up, and they they do treat it more like that. Yeah. So and and I think that's kind of like everyday life now. It's like some people do the same things every day, but some people I wouldn't say art form, but they try to make it. They elevate themselves because of how they do something. Yeah. Or, I think, I think we have... So I think that's very relatable. I think, yeah. I mean... Are we... So I think that's... You know what I'm saying? I think it's a good idea because it's very relatable. If people yeah. are using something every day and everybody does it, but some people, you know, want to set themselves apart and they use it to elevate themselves up, well, that makes cooking, sense. Cooking. Cooking. Like, everybody cooks to some degree right. or another, but there's a big difference between being able to make toast... And, and being able to, to roll out a, like a five-star. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I mean, yeah. Just, so, yeah, I think that's actually a relatable thing. I think people would relate to that. And I think the more relatable your characters are, the more people will attach themselves. When I would teach, um, they always told you to uh, make sure, it, the best way to have people, kids remember things or kids understand things is to make it relatable to them. And I think this is with anybody. And if you can find aspects of something that people relate to, I'm like, oh, you know, I might not use magic, but I understand how they feel about this. They're going to connect with your characters and your story much easier and, and, and stronger mm. than if you're doing something that they have no relation to whatsoever. And they have like, I don't understand what it's like at all. Yeah. You know, I never could do that, so I don't get it. You know, so I think that makes it relatable. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, I'm surprised there hasn't been a Harry Potter live action show yet either. Uh, you know, give them time. I mean, I sure. could see them doing. I could see them doing that because I would like to see like an unabridged version of Harry Potter with all the stuff you know that they cut out of movies in the. Okay. Um, if this pops art animation, can you want to tell me the web comic name for our web comic? Shadow Binders. Yes, yeah, it's Shadow Monster Binders. Studies and Harry Go Potter. You had a page put up on the topostic page. Oh yeah. We have it on our our web on our website. Our, our own website. It's further ahead. He just pulled this up as this is old. Stuff. We did like a whole building, exposition yeah. dump on that, which I probably shouldn't have done, but it was kind of fit when we did it. Well, people were asking questions because we didn't really spell out like. And this is from yeah, this is from like six or seven years ago. We never really spelled out how the world works, so it was just like exposition. But dump. It made, we Blah. did it in a way that made sense. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. Thanks a lot, Mister. I make my characters all look alike. No, I was just saying <laughs> no. It was intentional because I remember I was getting on you. I'm like, people keep asking us how the world works and what's what and where is what. So let's 
give them right. a... Well, yeah, yeah this answers this question. You probably answered this already, but do you ever think about how the economy works and how wars are fought, healthcare? Yeah, we, we yeah. it ties in. We do do some of that. We cover some of it, what, what the kingdoms are, who the rulers are, that kind of thing. Like, some people get much more involved in that than other people. Like I said, my one friend um, would do binders of information about all that, but, you know, religion, how everything works, and, you know, what taxes they pay, and that kind of stuff. And it just depends on how deep you want to go with it. Well, shadow binders, it actually was... It actually was um, you know, that's actually kind of a big part of it because how, you know, not to give too much away, but like in, in the storyline, you know, Ren, Ren's ideology, I think he's more of like a, he's definitely a libertarian, I think, yeah. in terms of his, he's, he doesn't believe in, in helping people unless there's some kind of like, he has a reason for he it. He has a reason. There's a reason for it. We haven't gotten into that this one yet. But, graphic novel we did explained a lot of the reason for it. Yeah, we never but um, he is, he's not cold, but he's very much into like everybody pulling their own weight. Um, and actually the, 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 the baddie in the comic, um, takes over because he uses, uh, uses people. He basically yeah. uses poor people under the guise of helping them, but so he uses them to build an army in to it, take over. But how deep you go as right. far as what you determine, like how far you go in, you know, deciding what the currency is and what all that stuff is, is up to you. Um, I know people who do it that they don't even really talk about that much. It's more about the story and they bring it as needed. It was just kind of what we do. Yeah, and then I, I have other people that they base their whole story around their world that they built, that they spent years doing. So it's, it's just, there's I no right or wrong answer. I think it kind of determines your, your, your audience too. Cause I think it, I think you wind up like it's kind of the Star Trek versus Star Wars, you know, Star Wars, you have just, at least the original Star Wars, the original trilogy, you have just enough information to follow what's going on. Oh, there were Jedi. There's good guys. There's bad guys. There's an emperor. Uh, there's an empire. Okay, cool. That's all and I need to know. And we do some more in depth things on side notes, but right. oh yeah, the worst witch. Yeah. They actually have, see, they, they did a um, new version of it, didn't they? On Netflix. And yeah. there's a new version of worst witch I on did Netflix. Tim Curry version. Though, and, so cool. and they had just put season two up cause I think our daughter already watched it cause she yeah. likes it. So their worst witch, they did the old version. They only have a new version of it and our daughter's all about it. Um, here's the thing about art schools. And I had an art teacher tell me this once because I went to art school and Neon did not. And an art teacher I had told me once, um, he said, the only thing about art schools is it teaches you the same thing you can learn on your own. It's just we do it quicker. Yeah. So, I mean, pretty much uh, it's up to you. If you want to take some classes to help, um, you know, get into you know, fine tune what you already know how to do or pick up some new things. Our daughter, what she did, she's like 10 and her drawing skills improved vastly by watching some YouTube tutorials. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and she picked up all kinds of stuff and it was like night and day. If you saw her drawings from like a year ago to now and, it, and she just went and watched some tutorials. So there's some things you specifically want to fine tune or do better on. You can find all that on the internet. Um, if you want to go to college, you can. Um, but I, I think the professor is right. Unless you're going for something like, you know, teaching, nursing, being a doctor, um, something like art, you can still learn it yourself. It's just, you might not learn it as quickly. Yeah. And definitely take business classes too. Yeah, I definitely take business. Yeah, artists, uh, the most successful artists are the ones who actually know how to handle money and make money. Um, artists today don't, I, a lot of them don't know how to make money, which is why they're constantly grumpy, I think, on Twitter, is because they don't know how to make money. And yeah, they're probably. Mad. They're, mad about, they're mad at people who do make money because they, they think they should be making money, too. Netflix and DreamWorks might change gender of 80s cartoons. Oh, I'm sure they will. Who knows? I'm I'm pretty much counting on it <laughs> so you know i'm sure if they don't do that they'll make them a different ethnicity just to make them a different ethnicity or whatever else and i am sure that's going to happen i have no doubt um no idea tv series we were talking about that earlier today too about um tv series and sometimes the, the tv series because they were talking about um if disney with the fox deal would get the fantastic four um, you know, X Men, those kind of things. That maybe a TV series would not be a wouldn't be a bad idea because you can do a lot more of a TV series than a, a movie. Yeah, there, so, now there is supposed to be a TV series of uh, uh, the Golden Compass, his Dark Materials. Now they they did the the one movie and it didn't do that great. I actually thought it was a pretty decent adaptation, but I guess the BBC is going to go back and actually do a series. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think the the cool thing about TV shows is I think you could do a lot more with them. Yeah, I think Fantastic Four be okay. I, I mean, because you know the problem with the TV show though is they're kind of limited by budget though. So you know you're not going to see Mr. Fantastic stretching too much. They're not going to have these big galactic, you know, Jack Kirby space adventures That's like true. they do in the comics. Probably not because they, they, don't have some, a budget for they do it. some because yeah. they they do on some of the shows. It'd be do like have. a sitcom with superheroes. That's or not something. always a bad thing. That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Didn't they have one of those? It was on like. Cartoon Network or something? Or was it the um, Tick? No, no. Yeah. It was like there's much superheroes left in the house, and it was like a live action show. What was it? It was on like it was on um, 
Adult Swim, I think. Oh my God! Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I forget. It was like what it's a called. reality TV show with yeah, like yeah, yeah. It was like all these like superhero. That, that was yeah. I remember that vaguely. I can't remember what it's called though. Um, parallel universes. I think the problem with Shira. I think um, if they had done a parallel universe, or if they had done it as okay, Shira is no longer fighting, but this is her prodigy and and or her kid, or um, you know somebody else comes in and, and she's training them and they're taking over. They could have gone away with a lot more. I think the reason people are so mad is because they they made it Shira, but um i think that you can see multiverse is a lot of places i know they do it with like even like um agents of shield and stuff it's not really a multiverse it's supposed to be the same universe but it, it's like you know what i'm saying yeah yeah it's kind of different it's... they do the multiverses on like the the dc shows the dc dc yeah i think it was harvey birdman um was it? No, it wasn't. Harvey, I don't know if it was Harvey Birdman. Harvey, he was the attorney. Uh, it was like a maybe it was, but it was like a show. Drawn was together like, was no. Yeah, drawn, drawn together. together. That was yeah, it. Yeah, it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be like it was drawn supposed together. to be like uh, the real world, but with like these these. You almost ended up on the real world. Yeah, I did actually. That's that's a whole other yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I almost I almost wound up on on season three of the real world, but I was like a month too young. I think it was a month too young. And uh, you made it like close to the end of. The... I did. I was in the last like twenty five candidates for the the real world season three but i would have had to share a house with puck and he was awful (laughs) but yeah so judd judd winnick uh he he got on and and i did not so um there you go sorry so nothing became a judd winnick he just (laughs) i'm just saying (laughs) they they needed an art guy so that's him right yeah the disney rapunzel tv show is pretty good i thought it was funny that they gave her her hair back but you know they had to for the show but you know yeah i know they did that it's really popular tons of toys we're seeing them at the at stores all the time, and yeah. kids really like it, so that's cool. But um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? I mean, is there any more story questions people have, or are you going to put this on the internet and nope. hashtag? You should no and hashtag it my Steven Universe fan art. Uh no, because it's not very good art. I drew it really quickly, but it's it doesn't have to be good art. But this is what Steven Universe would look like in the eighties. He'd be yeah, he'd be like freaking smoking and everything, man. He'd be he'd be buff. Just don't ask him how he fuses, because it's. It's not safe for work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I, I think, like the art style of Tangled Show. It is cute. Yeah, they do have. Um, do you think that non-comedic cartoons for adults are a viable market? I, I think. Um. Oh God! Most of the ones I watch, if that's their anime, I don't really watch most. I mean, anime they can do non-comedic. Yeah, I still think there needs to be, and I was thinking about this the other day, uh, because I think about weird stuff like this all the time. I I think there needs to be an actual, like, official name for 70s and 80s adult cartoons, like heavy metal and rock and roll, and and all these, like, really, like, kind of fringy... um, No, you mean as fringies or used for No, but they were, like, they weren't really, like... my name. Yeah, but they weren't really, like, like mainstream hits, you know? Like, heavy metal was not a mainstream hit, but it became a cult hit. It was for adults. Uh, there were a lot of like R-rated, uh, like rock, you know, inspired rock and roll inspired cartoons back in the seventies and eighties. Mm. There's a whole like bunch of them, but I don't think there's actually an official, like an official title for those those movies. Like you can't just look at them and say they're X Y Z. That's an X Y Z film. It's just like oh, it was a weird adult animated movie made in 1983 that featured anthropomorphic, you know, cats and dogs in the post-apocalyptic world with music by Lou Reed and Cheap Trick and Blondie. Yeah. You know, like, that's a lot to the say. Take live action. Neon you know, love the take live action. I like both of them. I love the cartoon. And I actually had a giant talking tick action figure on my desk for years. How do you try not to use cliche plots in Dark Lord Chosen One, Rivalry? We try not to, but you know what? You're inevitably going to hit some of them because there's no way to tell a story without hitting some kind of cliche because it, it always happens. I mean, you can't ever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because everything's been done. Everything's and, been done. And to get some storylines across, there's a reason why it's cliche is because it works. X Men so, Evolution was my was my favorite X Men animated series. I loved Evolution. We used to watch it. I remember on Cartoon Network at night. Um, you just you just rolled it. The painting in the movie thing that was actually funny because the original when they originally were going to do Tangled, it was supposed to be a moving painting it in was the style to. of the the movie was going to be a moving painting, and then they didn't do it that way, which is a bummer. They actually scrapped it and redid it a, a whole thing over again yeah. uh, for Rapunzel. But yeah, so that's cool. They got rock and roll. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, uh, evolution was so good. No, yeah, t- Tangles, they couldn't. I don't think they could get the technology to catch up to what they wanted to do with it. No, and, I think and now, now they, they can do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah but, but um, yeah, Rock and Roll was really freaking awesome. Then they went on to do Care Bears. 
Nirvana. So I know. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> so you know, weird. Like they did rock and roll, and they did Care Bears they have, after they, that. You know, they have you know breadth and what they can do. Fire you know? and Ice. Yes, heard of Fire. I've watched like all those. Orion uh, was Orion a star. Uh, it was like a knockoff Star know. Wars movie. They had. There were like probably two dozen like adult animated sci-fi movies back in the seventies and eighties that don't. There's like no official title for these movies. Like everybody still remembers, kind of remembers heavy metal, but like. You know, the other movies, the Akshi stuff, like, it just kind of got lost. The Wizards, you know. I remember seeing um, them, but not a lot of them. It just kind of got lost in it. And there were a lot of shorts, too, that were, like, really trippy that was all based on kind of like the heavy metal magazine type type stuff. Well, yeah, style. I think that's what they were trying to do. Yeah, but you don't, there's, like, no name for these. Fantastic Planet You're going to make names. I already come up with Fringy, and I've come up with Boom and Brains, and I came up with Alcoholic Nut. So now it's your turn. Nut. I don't know. There needs to be, there needs to be, like, a... Like a like an actual classification of these films, I'd love to I'd love to see like more adult stuff. The last uh, adult animated movie I can think of was probably like a Scanner Darkly was probably would be I'd throw that in there too, and then maybe the Matrix animated Animatrix. Um, we like the Care Bears. Um, they used to they Care Bears used to fight things like Satan too. I mean, yeah, they had like a back demonic in the book. Eighties man, everybody's fighting Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a book of evil. It was like a yeah, it was a book like of a evil. book of evil. Um, how, how do we always like derail in the nineteen eighties cartoons? Christian every porn. every freaking that um, alcoholic Mets new Christian porn. Toon exploitation. Toon exploitation. There we go. I freaking love that toon exploitation. Yeah, uh, Fantastic Planet was probably one of the first ones. It was freaking weird if you've never seen it. Now that I'm going to watch all this trippy stuff because she keeps sending me a lot of trippy stuff. But yeah. We're going to have to wrap this up here pretty soon. Um, yeah. You should put it on the internet. No, I think you should. Why? I are you think... afraid? No, I'm not afraid. God, just... they always, they're coming this is, after me every this day. Is not, so. This is <laughs> definitely not my best work. I was just drawing something quick on the iPad um, because we needed to draw something. So, um, But anyway, <laughs> if you have any more questions about like stories or how to do things or you know how we do things, because there is no right or wrong way to do no. storytelling. Um, you Pretty much that's a great thing about comics is you can do whatever the hell you want. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Always... And don't let people tell you you can't because it's a big internet. If they don't like your stuff, then they can go find other stuff, you know? <laughs> so they don't have to like your stuff. You will find people who like your stuff. Yeah, they'll find you. I, I mean, I'm sure they'll find you. Especially if you go to places like Webtoons where people are there looking for stuff. So, uh... Yeah, the know. Care Bears are... The Care Bears spy on everyone. They did. And they know where you're... Yeah, they had they that little, their little telescope they and they're in the clouds. Like, and they had the one... To, to make you wonder what they're watching sometimes. And the I'm just saying. the cloud keeper, that one human slave they keep around to right. do the janitorial... But they're always watching all the people and their, their spyglass and makes you kind of wonder what they're, <clears throat> what they're watching. Love a lot, Bear. What are you doing? Get away from that telescope. <laughs> where saying. is your hand? <laughs> our son loved Care Bears. He still has his when he was little. He loved oh, them. Oh, my God. He's going to kill you for saying that. But, um... So now tomorrow you guys are gonna try to do games. Yeah, we're gonna try to do uh, we uh, happy few, okay. um, which looks freaking weird. So uh, tomorrow, probably sometime tomorrow morning. Cause I'll be gone. Yeah, so we'll be doing uh, Squid King and I are gonna we're gonna start doing gaming videos again. We kind of got away from that because we got derailed by ranting about things. Um, but we're gonna try to do uh, we happy few tomorrow because the embargo is lifted. We do have a review copy of it. It looks pretty freaking weird. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm attracted to this game for some reason. I just want to play it. Grumpy Bear would fit in the internet because everybody's depressed and they want to make sure that you know it at all times. Uh, Eeyore is my favorite character and uh, one of my favorite characters ever and he's always depressed. So I'm just saying. Uh, story and... What advice do you have for start uh, starting a story in media? Um, I don't know. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, just start. You, everything start. It doesn't have to be good to begin. Just do something. Start. It's a lot of people suggest if small. you're gonna, yeah, do something small, like a small story that you can handle first, if that makes you feel better, more confident, and then you know go on to an epic that takes many years, like we did, which is a long story. We probably should have done it smaller. Yeah, but um, yeah, that might do that. Okay, but guys, we're gonna have to. Wrap yeah, we're gonna up, wrap so. this one up. Uh, like I said, tomorrow, hopefully, we're gonna stream. We happy few. Um, I'll have to go read. Com- well, I'll try not to read comments on uh, the other videos. See who's calling me names now. Oh God, yeah, the Shira videos always get. People. I get called lots of f words. So you know, we- it's not for you. How We're gonna get t-shirts and just say it's first. not for you. What we did was um, <laughs> we had the beginning and the ending. And we kind of figured out what we were doing for a beginning and for ending. And then we figured out what the major plot points were. And those ones are so kind of set in stone. And then it's like, what can we do that's fun on the way up to these plot points? And that one's kind of, we have give on. Yeah. Um, but we're going to have to leave because I hear our kids thumping. And yeah, they're like, are you angry. shutting up yet? 
Okay, so, uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already and tell people about the channel. We hit 6,000 today, which is awesome. Thank you so much uh, for that. And, uh, yeah. That's, See, they, that's buy, cool. they buy your thing as a t-shirt. Uh, it's not for you? We're just no, gonna... I thought it meant the drawing. Oh, but... Steven, you... Steven... <laughs> but, yeah, it's not for you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, put <laughs> let, put this on the front and then put it's not for you on the back. That's what you should do. Oh, oh my, my God. God. That would be funny. You should. Okay, we'll see you guys later. See ya.